<laughs> Can we have a roll call, please? Certainly. Uh, Miss Wells? Here. Mr. Witherspoon? Michael might be frozen. You can't tell. But he's here. <laughs> he is here. Uh, okay. Mr. Ruina? Here. Mr. Cantor? Here. And Mr. Shulman? Here. Okay, you have a quorum. Okay. Um, and um, Ryan, you're going to bring uh, um, someone over to represent these first two items? Yep, Deborah should be coming over right okay. now. Okay. Is there, Deborah? Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, Deborah, you are uh, on the first uh, uh, piece of business. <clears throat> Excuse me, extension of uh, time request on approved applications. The first is number 5 20 SPR slash 07 20 CAM. Wall Street Recap Associates, uh, 61 Wall Street, also known as Wall Street Place Phase One. And um, you're uh, requesting uh, an extension of time. Yes, we are requesting an extension of time on both applications related to 61 Wall Street and 17 Isaac Street. This is better known as Phase One of the Wall Street Place Redevelopment. Since our approval almost a year ago, um, an appeal was taken up and it is currently pending with respect to 61 Wall Street. So that is the reason for the, the need for the extension. Um, so it's pr fairly straightforward, um, the appeal is pending currently and um, not entirely clear how long it will take to resolve, but at this time we're seeking a one year extension. Okay, uh, on this first uh, request, can I have a um, motion to approve the extension? So moved. Okay, Richard uh, moves and uh, Galen seconded. Um, I think we can do this with a show of hands. Uh, all those in favor of the ex one year extension. Okay, uh, it's unanimous. So that is approved. Uh, the second, <clears throat> 6 20 SPR slash 08-20 cam, again, Wall Street Cap Associates, 17 Isaac Street, uh, also part of uh, Wall Street Place Phase One. Uh, Attorney Brancato? Yes, this is the companion um, matter that I alluded to earlier, and together the two applications make up, just to clarify, the, the Phase One of the Wall Street Place Redevelopment. So. Um, you know, the project is um, the two approvals combined make up the project. So um, because one approval was appealed, we are seeking the extension for, for both applications. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is there, again, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Richard uh, moves, uh, is there a second? Michael seconds. Again, show of hands, uh, all those in favor? Um, again, unanimous. Galen, uh, what did you do to your hand? <laughs> I shouldn't raise my other hand. It's just habit to raise my right hand. I fell down and nothing happened to me, but I scraped the top of my hand. So it needed to be, you know, I had to go to the hospital and get them to oh. the wound properly, but it's really <laughs> relatively minor. I'm sorry to hear that. But all right, really lucky. Well, <laughs> the motion uh, was uh, approved uh, unanimously. Uh, so let's let's move on uh, to review and uh, action on uh, pending uh, applications, and uh, that's twenty twenty one dash eighteen r slash spr slash cam twenty five Van Zandt Street. <clears throat> condominium. And uh, there are uh, two uh, actions required. Uh, the first being the building zone text amendment 
to create a vocational trade workforce uh, training center school. Uh, this use and to uh, allow the use as a principal use in the industrial uh, number one uh, zone. Um, we held a public hearing uh, on this. This is a uh, continuation of the public hearing uh, exclusively for the uh, purpose of uh, reaching a decision on uh, this uh, application. Uh, we, we gave a um, um, good deal of time to public comment, heard from everyone uh, who was at that meeting who wished to speak. And so now the uh, discussion is among ourselves. Um, the, the issue, uh, as uh, I recall, was um, there was some concern about the parking and how do we address, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I need to take these one at a time. The first one is the language change that would allow this use in uh, the industrial zone. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm sorry. I need to recuse myself. I'm okay. So I'll Thank just. You, Galen. Uh, that leave that that means this needs to be. If we're to approve it, it needs to be uh, uh, unanimous. Um, can I, uh, Steve? Can you put up the uh, language for that change? Sure, Brian. Brian, anyway, you have that handy. I'm sorry, I don't. Brian's much quicker on those items than I am. I okay. We just need to change the effective date. Um, right. All right. Um, can I have a uh, motion <clears throat> to either approve or deny? Approve. Okay. This is the, uh, the text the text change, right? Yeah. Right. This is the text change. Uh, Nick has made the motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, and uh, Michael seconds. Uh, let's go to uh, discussion of this. Um, I know we have been uh, saying uh, since this application first came before us uh, quite some time ago um, that we felt this was, uh, as a group, we felt this was a, um, a good idea. We had some questions about uh, the specific application and we'll get to that next, but um, um, I don't believe there was objection uh, to uh, uh, this change in uh, the language. Um, comments from anyone else? All right, if not, uh, we'll go uh, directly to uh, uh, a vote. This is fairly a significant change, so let's um, poll the members. Sure. Uh, Mr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mr. Cantor? Yes. Mr. Rowena? Yes. And Mr. Shulman? Yes. The, the amendment passes. Okay. Um, uh, the second part. Um, is um, to actually um, uh, allow um, uh, this project to go forward at 25 Van Zandt Street. Um, comments? We I did provide, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. That's, I, I I think that I made it uh, my position fairly clear um, last time uh, regarding the parking issue. And uh, I must confess um, that this special meeting I thought was just for the next application. And I am not aware of what the uh, resolution to the issue was, if there is a resolution to the issue of the um, easement 
to the state or from the state. But the, let me let me let me ask uh, again, either Steve or Brian, if you'd um, put up the recommended uh, language. Um, you may find there um, uh, a resolution that you find acceptable. Can you make that just a bit larger? Okay, thank you. So the, j just to address Mr. Rowena's question about the, the parking specifically, um, condition two and, and condition three, I believe, I'm not sure if there's one past that yet, looks like four, anything with yellow highlight was new, added in response to your discussion at the end of the hearing regarding, um, you know, possibly like phasing in occupancy and construction. So there was a little bit of checks and balances as it moves forward and as the space fills up. So that's kind of how we try to craft the conditions. Yes, I, we, I remember we discussed this at length. So this is the, this is the uh, amended resolution, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't look at it sooner. Steve, is there anything about requiring ownership of those additional lots to stay with them or whatnot? I only ask that because I feel like I drove past one of those sites recently and I saw a for sale sign up and I could be miss noting which one's 25 or I'm not 22 or 28 on that block, but I would just want to make sure that uh, that we capture that. Yeah, I believe that is Brian's got that highlighted now. Okay. I think that does that. And uh, I believe the other thing we were waiting for was approval by the health department for this project. Uh, no, there, not, nothing pending with this one. I'm oh, I'm sure. sorry. Uh, my my apologies. Uh, that's for um, uh, the next uh, public hearing. Correct. Yeah. So, Steve, do I have it right that what we're proposing here is allow for 100 square feet of occupancy. Uh, and 100,000, Nick. 100,000, sorry. Minor <laughs> yeah. detail there. Just a couple of zeros to the left of the decimal point. And then assess that, see how that goes. And then if acceptable, staff will make the call to permit the full occupancy. Yeah, in, in, in a nutshell, correct. Is it, so the, the request, just to back up, um, so we're making sure we're all on the same page. The request for us was for approximately 150,000 square feet of the entire building to be used for the workforce training center. Uh, the commission had the concerns because there isn't really an applicable standard to this. And so um, we wanna, you know, obviously if we approve it, we hope it's successful and, and fills out, um, but we just wanna make sure there isn't a, you know, parking spillover issue onto any of the neighboring properties. So the applicant revised their uh, parking schematic in response to staff concerns. They've included the two parking lots across the street at 25 and 27 to be included as part of the application. And what we've crafted in the conditions you're looking at now is right now we're approving up to 100,000 square feet of the 150. When you get to 50,000 uh, square feet, you need to look at the site in terms of occupancy, and you know what's actually going on the site in terms of tenants and how many students they have. So we get a, a sense of how it's gonna play out uh, going forward. And then when they get to 100,000 square feet, they do that same exercise with the parking. But in addition to that, they also look at the traffic generated as, as a result of that impact. And should those two analyses uh, indicate that there's adequate parking and then there is no additional negative impact on the traffic as a result of the new development, then the applicant can then fill up that remaining 50,000 square feet. Cool. And I, I'm assuming you'll let us know if, when those milestones are hit as well. Or Certainly, the future be happy to report cool. back. And then one thing also on the signage down below on the wayfinding stuff, staff is going to be reviewing and approving or taking a look at that once they're ready for that. Is that what that, yeah, that I, I, yeah, that'll come in as part of the eventual um, site plan application that they have to submit for their for their project to the okay, cool. The, in, yeah, in just the multiple response. Gotcha. Yeah, just the multiple parking lots. I'm curious to see how it's gonna play itself out. Okay. Uh, do, do folks think that this um, 
proposal here sort of aligns and is a good path forward? Brian, can you scroll up and just leave it on the, um, is it pot, just leave it on those the highlighted ones, the three through four or five, whatever that is. I wanna make sure that everybody had a chance to read those. Yeah, Steve, one of the questions I don't recall that we asked, and perhaps we should, um, how is this going to be monitored by the owner uh, to be sure that um, he doesn't get a lot of uh, commuter parking uh, in that spot, that is folks who are using the train? Um, that's a good question. I hadn't really um, thought about that because right now that that same issue, you know, Putting COVID, uh, you know, COVID issues aside for the moment, that's that's always been the same availability for parking on site, whether he's had full tenancy or not. So I, I am assuming he's going to keep monitoring those same practices he has in the past. Yeah, yeah, I would assume so too. It's in his own best interest. Um, he doesn't he doesn't want this undermined by uh, having uh, people parking there who shouldn't be. Right. All right, uh, is there a uh, motion to approve? I'll move to approve. Okay, Richard moves to approve. Is there a second? A second. All right, Nick seconds. Uh, let's, um, let's do a roll call count on this. Sure, Mr. Witherspoon? Have we lost Michael? No, there he is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was frozen for a second. Uh, Mr. Cantor? Yeah. Uh, yes. Mr. Rowena? Yes. Mr. Shulman? Yes. Uh, that's unanimous. All right. Has the uh, four votes uh, needed and it is uh, approved. Um, Steve and Brian, nice job on that language. That was all Brian, Brian's, Brian's handiwork. Yeah, that's really, that's really good. Very nice uh, to have that one off our uh, plate. Uh, this, is, this has been going on for a very long time. <clears throat> uh, the next item uh, is, uh, and uh, as you can see, if you look down at participants, at the moment, we have 132. Um, this is 2021-32 SP, and I apologize here for uh, any mispronunciation. The Guru Te Bahandur G Foundation, Inc., uh, 283 Richards Avenue, construction of a two-story Sikh religious uh, center. Uh, before we begin, um, Given the uh, number of people uh, in attendance, there are a couple of things I wanted uh, uh, to uh, say. First is uh, we understand uh, that there is a, um, I believe it's a Christmas program at uh, Ponis Ridge Middle School this evening. And uh, there was concern expressed that uh, perhaps everyone who wanted to speak this evening might not have that opportunity because they would be uh, attending the program at uh, the middle school. Uh, as a result, uh, what we've de decided to do is uh, at, at some point this evening, we will um, end the hearing, but continue it uh, to uh, January 6th uh, when we can give uh, uh, folks who are unable to attend this evening, uh, the uh, opportunity to uh, comment. Um, be, beyond that, uh, probably should say, uh, since uh, many of the people uh, here this evening may not be familiar with the zoning process, just a few words um, about the uh, process. Um, we have received a uh, very large volume of uh, 
letters uh, regarding this project. Um, uh, many opposed to the project and a fair number uh, in uh, support for the project. Uh, and I, I guess I want to say at the beginning that um, this is not a uh, political process. The mayor, the common council, uh, the other elected officials uh, in the city um, have no say uh, in uh, this uh, decision-making um, uh, process. Uh, the uh, decision lies uh, exclusively with uh, the commissioners of the uh, zoning commission. Um, the uh, organization uh, making uh, this application uh, has purchased uh, the property and uh, they have a right uh, not only uh, to um, um, put together their uh, project, but to be heard uh, by us. Uh, we have no right whatsoever uh, to, deny, to uh, deny them a uh, fair hearing uh, on, um, on this matter. Uh, we operate under uh, a series of uh, state laws and local regulations that define what we can and cannot uh, approve. For many applications, frankly, our, our hands are tied uh, because the applicant uh, can do what they're proposing as of right. Um, in other cases, such as uh, this one, we do have uh, some uh, limited uh, flexibility within uh, uh, the, um, the law, but uh, we have to justify um, in accordance with the uh, applicable laws and regulations, any decision uh, that we make. Um, here's what it means to those of you who wish to speak this evening. Um, since there are uh, a large volume of uh, speakers, we'd like to ask, uh, uh, although we don't typically place time constraints on speakers, we would like to ask that uh, you keep your comments uh, as short as possible while saying everything uh, that uh, it's important for you to say. Uh, if you're uh, simply repeating uh, what other people have said, we'd, we'd ask that you simply let us know uh, that you either support or don't support the uh, project for the same reasons as uh, others who have spoken, um, rather than taking uh, still more time to uh, uh, outline uh, the same objections that, um, that, we've, all, that we've already heard. Um, we understand that uh, for many of you, um, our whatever decision we reach uh, is uh, fraught. Uh, and uh, that many of you um, have uh, strong uh, emotional feelings uh, about this project uh, one way or the other. But keep in mind um, that, again, we're constrained by the law and can only reach a decision based on the facts in the case. Um, finally, uh, inappropriate language or personal attacks uh, on us uh, or the applicant or the city for that matter <clears throat> will require me to have you uh, cut out of uh, uh, the meeting. And frankly, uh, those sorts of attacks um, serve neither your interest uh, uh, nor ours. Uh, we ask um, again uh, that um, you keep your comments as uh, brief as possible, um, but keep in mind you only have one opportunity to speak. Um, the way this works is the applicant uh, will describe the project. Uh, at any time uh, during, uh, during that time, the commission members may, um, and, and I'm certain will, uh, ask questions. Uh, when uh, the presentation is completed, uh, the public will be invited to uh, uh, one at a time uh, ask questions 
And uh, Mr. Baker will at that point explain um, how that's uh, done. Uh, you're required uh, to give uh, your name uh, and, uh, and uh, your address. And again, given the number of people um, who are with us this evening, uh, we'd ask uh, that again, you keep it as uh, brief as possible while uh, covering um, everything that uh, uh, is important uh, to you. Um, with that, um, I'm going to uh, uh, open it up uh, to uh, Attorney uh, Sachi. Um, it is now uh, 6.30 p.m. Um, at 10 p.m., if we go that late, uh, I'm going to ask the commission members whether uh, they want to go further or whether they would prefer um, after three and a half hours uh, of listening, uh, whether they would uh, prefer that we um, cut off uh, the meeting um, and uh, again, restart it uh, on January uh, 6th. We will be holding that meeting on January 6th, uh, whether we go through all the speakers tonight or not, again, because um, uh, people uh, may not uh, uh, have had an opportunity to speak if they uh, are attending the program at uh, Bonus Ridge Middle, Middle School. With that, I'll uh, turn it over to uh, Attorney Sachi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Good evening. For the record, my name is Liz Suchi. I am an attorney and partner at Carmody Torrance, Sandeck and Hennessy, 707 Summer Street in Stamford. And we represent the applicant, the Guru Tech Bahadur G Foundation, Inc. Uh, present with me this evening, and you will hear from these individuals, is Chris DeAngelis, professional engineer and principal with the firm of Cabezas DeAngelis. Marcos Reinheimer, he is a, an architect with Primrose. Aris Stalas, a landscape architect and a principal of Aris Land Studio. And finally, Neil Olinsky, a, prince, a professional engineer with the firm of SLR Consulting. All of these individuals have forwarded their resumes to the staff for inclusion in the official record. And based upon their experience and educational backgrounds, I request that they be qualified as experts before you this evening. A matter of housekeeping, for the record, the application for special permit and supplemental documentation was submitted to the Department of Planning and Zoning in this commission on August 9th. It was also referred to the Department of Public Works, Fire, Transportation Mobility and Parking and the Health Department on that same day. Neighbors were notified by certificate of mailing of the submission of the application on August 11th, 2021 in accordance with your regulations and a certificate of mailing was returned to the staff and it should be in the file. A code enforcement administration committee meeting was held on September 8th. And for tonight's meeting, neighbors were notified via certified mail return receipt requested on November 23rd to advise them of the date and time of the hearing. And the green cards have been returned to the PNZ office along with copies of letters for any mailing for which the green card has not been re received. Also present this evening, who will likely also speak to you, are Pama Gulati, who is president of the congregation's working committee and Mohinder Khalsi, a member of the congregation board. It is my privilege to represent the Guru Tech Bahadurji Foundation, whose congregants have been part of the fabric of Norwalk for more than 25 years. The, pro the property that they purchased in 2020 is located at 283 Richards Avenue. It is, it is district five, block 63, lot 72, and it is zoned AAA residence. The existing conditions are that the property is vacant. It had been the site of a dilapidated and blighted building for many years. And it was on the market for in excess of three years. My client bought the property in 2020 as it was specifically zoned for houses of worship and continues to be zoned in that regard today. The proposal before you is the construction of a Gurdwara, which is a house of worship for the Norwalk Sikh community. It will consist of a worship hall, space for kitchen and communal meal, space for religious instruction, and two upstairs bedrooms, one for the resident priest and one for visiting scholars or musicians that may come to the Gurdwara from time to time. The plan also incorporates parking, landscaping, lighting, other site improvements, along with well and septic systems. Sign-offs have been received by the fire department, 
the Health Department, and the Department of Public Works. I would like to just confirm, Mr. Shulman, that should the hearing be continued to January for additional public comment, that those members of the public who have spoken this evening will, as you mentioned, not have a second opportunity to speak on January 6th, but that would be limited to individuals who have not yet spoken. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, so long as um, there is um, no substantial uh, additional information provided uh, at that meeting. Understood. Thank you. A notable US Senator once said, you are entitled to your opinion, but you are not entitled to your own facts. Tonight, you will hear various comments, concerns and conjecture regarding this proposal. Some of it is very legitimate and some is not. While you listen, deliberate and vote, I urge that you remember the facts and here are some of the most salient ones. First of all, use. It is absolutely clear that houses of worship are permitted in the AAA resident zone as is the zoning classification of this property, which has, and the AAA resident zone has allowed houses of worship for more than 40 years. No zone change, text amendment, or variance is necessary for this house of worship. And as you are aware, there are three others in the immediate neighborhood, notably Temple Shalom, United Congregational Church, and St. Matthew's. Secondly, minimum lot side, size. The lot is in excess of one acre, which is the minimum requirement for a AAA resident zone. To those who would claim that the site is too small for this Gurdwara, I respectfully remind you that while non-residential uses in the B residence, C residence, and D resident zones require larger lots for houses of worship, such is not the case for the AAA resident zone. So the lot size for this proposed house of worship is compliant. Some have also referred in comments that have been received uh, to FAR, which is shorthand for floor area ratio, or the ratio between the grass, the gross floor area, or the gross square footage of a building or structure to the land upon which it is situated. There is no floor area ratio or FAR requirement or maximum in the AAA resident zone for any use. So as such, comments that the Gurdwara is too large for the, the lot is just incorrect. Building height. Houses of worship in this zone are permitted to be two and a half stories and 50 feet in height. This structure is two and a half stories and 20, 39 feet to the peak. Moreover, zoning regulations exempt church spires. So the domes atop the top of the Gurdwara are also exempt. Lastly, this structure is not subject to architectural review. Setbacks. Front, side, and rear setbacks for a house of worship, a non-residential use in a residential zone are much greater for, than for houses of worship than they are for residences. And all of the uh, additional setbacks required for this house of worship have been met. Parking, much has been said about this. However, existing, codified, accepted regulations apply and have been met. The regulations require one parking space for five seats in a worship hall based upon maximum seating capacity. A floor plan was submitted in September of this year that depicts 240 seats, which require 48 parking spaces. 53 have been proposed. The applicant has also secured offsite parking at Fox Run from the Recreation and Parks Department for its April 14th festival and a confirmatory email was provided to staff and should be in your file. It also discussed similar types of offsite parking with Normal Community College, which expressed a willingness to work with the applicant, but would not do so so far in advance. It is indicated to us that such requests would not be uh, considered more than one month prior to a specific date. All offsite parking needed to satisfy this, this Gurdwara have been met. As I mentioned, the, app and the application of the codified one to five parking ratio for houses of worship has been the city's pattern and practice and has been consistently applied to all houses of worship for more than 30 years, including Temple Shalom, United Church of Christ, St. Matthew's, Lighthouse Baptist, Al-Madani Mosque, St. Peter's Lutheran, the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witness, Korean Mission, Iglesia Hispana, and others and most recently, the Northeast Church, Community Church on East Avenue at Olmstead Place. A list of houses of worship has been submitted to you for your consideration. 
which reveal that the one to five parking ratio has been consistently applied and no other ratio has been required for a house of worship since at least 1985. The information in that memo was gleaned by me through physical review of the zoning department files. I bring this to your attention because if the zoning staff, the transportation mobility and parking department or its peer review consultant or, or some members of this commission or even a member of the public believe that a different ratio should be applied, this is a policy decision that must be implemented in a lawful, non-discriminatory manner by promulgating and enacting regulations for parking for houses of worship through the text amendment review and public hearing process, one similar to the, to the one that you just underwent for the trade school on the property on Van Zandt Street. Any other ratio or novel standard that this commission, its consultant, city departments, staff or the public seek to impose, whether it be parking or setbacks or density, that is different than those that are contained within the zoning regulations and which have been consistently and uniformly applied to all other houses of worship would in my opinion be improper, arbitrary, capricious and an abuse of discretion and would likely violate my client's due process and constitutional rights, including those protected under the Religious and Institutionalized Persons Land Use Prote Protection Act. I will submit for the record a brief memo on RELUPA, as it's commonly known, and I will deliver one copy of that memo to staff for the file and email a copy of it as well so it can be posted on the city's website. In fact, you have the power under Section 118.1400A, as you've exercised in the past, to undertake continuous review of the effectiveness and appropriateness of regulations, including parking. No such action has been taken to date, so the one to five ratio is the only par lawful parking requirement to be applied to this application. Size of the congregation. The number of adult members is approximately 185. This proposal is not presented to increase the Sikh population in Norwalk. Rather, it's to provide its members to have a reverent and proper venue for the free exercise and practice of their religion, just like members of the Catholic, Jewish, Protestant, Baptist, Episcopalian, Greek Orthodox, Methodist, Pentecostal, and other denominations have. Some background information on their worship services, and hopefully some of you have had the opportunity to visit. Services are on Sundays that begin at 1130 and last about an hour. Congregants arrive at different times. Some, some arrive at the outset of the service and stay throughout the service and through the afternoon meal. Some arrive a little later and stay maybe a half hour. Some arrive at noon and stay maybe 15 minutes. It's a much more fluid service and a much more fluid process and, um, and worship service. So there is an ebb and flow for arrival and departure times. As I mentioned, a communal lunch is provided to all those who participate in the service and it's open to the public. The lunch is prepared and served by members of the congregation. There is no proposed day camp, after school program or summer camp, but we do propose a, a religious school to instruct members of the faith and their children. At this time, I'd like to uh, have Mr. Bilotti, the president of the working committee, address you for just a bit. And then we'll, once he's finished, I will return to the podium. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Lou Shulman, Zoning Commissioners, my friends, and my fellow Norwalkers. I'm Purshottam, or Pama Singulari, a humble servant at Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji Foundation currently serving the congregation and the community as president of the working committee. Just to give you a little bit about my background, I live, I've live, i lived in Norwalk for the last 25 years and work here in IT profession in various capacities with companies like Priceline, GE, to name a couple. I'm fortunate to have raised my family in our beautiful city of Norwalk that not only embraces diversity, but thrives in being a multicultural society, whether it relates to food and restaurants, school system, or workforce. My children are a product of our wonderful public schools, Candle, Columbus, Ponas, McMahon. They not only excelled at academics, but my son was president at his high school for three years, and my daughter was a valedictorian at Ponas and salutatorian at McMahon, and now is a med student. I cannot be happier and more satisfied with our city. 
My family and I are so grateful to be part of congregation at Gurdjieff Bahadur Foundation ever since we landed in Connecticut back in 94. For a small, close-knit community like ours, Gurdwara is a place of worship, special learning, as well as a place of developing lifelong relationships that transcend outside the four walls of the temple. The warmth of the local community and the charm of the city is what has kept us rooted in Norwalk for a quarter of a century. The Sikh faith, and particularly our local community, has been steadfast in teaching and imbibing the value of service to humanity to our next generation. And you can't teach a kid unless you really practice it yourself. So for me, the most rewarding part of the spiritual journey with my fellow congregants has been the outreach work that we do together for the Norwalk community at large. For example, while celebrating Vesaki on April 14, some of us are very busy outside signing up friends and collecting thousands of dollars for the Norwalk Cancer Walk that follows a few weeks after Vesaki. We support the Norwalk Hospital every year in their ca cancer walks and uh, collect funds for them. Or you can see us distributing free water to the kids marching in the hot sun in Memorial Day Parade. In March of 2020, when the pandemic broke out, Norwalk Senior Center was shorthanded for drivers who could volunteer to deliver meals to seniors during those unsafe and uncertain times. By the grace of God, I've been able to get the blessings of Norwalk seniors by carrying out the scheduled deliveries to to date. In the proposed new building for the Gurdwara, we are looking forward to having three separate floors for three separate functions. Those are conducted inside the building. That is a prayer hall, a dining hall, and an education hall. It has been our in, uh, desire for a long time to make proper facilities where resources are not a constraint. I don't think our dreams would be too different from any other faith communities who is looking to build new facilities from scratch like we are doing right now. Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikh faith, during one of his travels in Asia, set up his camp outside the city. Due to his growing popularity, priests and the religious leaders got worried and requested the head of the saints to address the threat. He sent a bowl full of milk to Guru Nanak, indicating the city was already full of other faiths and saints, and there was no room for any new faith or ideology. Guru Nanak responded by adding a flower petal to the bowl, which implied like the petal did not make the bowl overflow, so was his presence. It will not displace any other faiths and his ideology will only be as the petal's fragrance added to the milk. As we all know, Richards Avenue is home to three religious institutions, United Congregational Church, Temple Shalom, and St. Matthew's, and two educational institutes, Fox Run Elementary and Norwalk Community College. The size of our congregation and the frequency of services is minuscule compared to those. And our immaculate record in Norwalk and the zeal of the community to be of help to everyone around can only be a positive addition to the neighborhood and an asset to the community at large. I sincerely hope that our neighbors embrace us with open arms. In conclusion, I want to thank our professional and highly qualified technical team led by attorney Sachi for working diligently and with various court agencies and the city departments in meeting and exceeding the code and the regulation requirements put forth and thus successfully securing their sign-offs. Hence, I humbly request you to approve our application for special permit to build the new Gurdwara at 283 Richards Avenue. I want to thank all commissioners for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of our Gurdwara, our congregation, Guru Tegh Bahadurji Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gulati. Now I would like to have Chris DeAngelis, professional engineer with Cabezas DeAngelis, uh, screen share the site plan and walk you through the site plan, the drainage report, and we'll move through the more technical components of this presentation. Chris? Okay, uh, thank you. If everyone can hear me. Um, my name is Chris DeAngelis. I am a professional engineer with Cabezas DeAngelis and the civil engineer, project engineer for this project. Um, 
I'm going to start off just by going through the site plan, which um, <clears throat> you, I, I also presented uh, at, during our last meeting, um, which I believe was uh, October 7th. Uh, I will um, then pass the presentation over to Mr. Ar Aristalis, who is the landscape architect for the project. He will quickly go through the planting plan. Um, and then we will hear from uh, Marcos Reinheimer, who is the project, project architect with Get Associates. And then finally, we will hear from Neil Olinsky, the uh, traffic engineer with uh, SLR Consulting. So what you see uh, in front of you on the screen is the, the project plans. Um, I'm going to scroll down to the site plan, which contains most of the information. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and center it on the screen. Okay. So uh, this is, uh, again, this is the site plan, the building located in the center of the site. Um, as Attorney Suchi noted that the setback requirements um, for this uh, special use in, the, in this district are, are uh, exaggerated. They're, they're, they're larger than they would be for a typical uh, residential use. Um, you can see the front yard setback here. Uh, the, this first uh, dimension line of 40 feet would be the allowed setback for the front yard for a residential use, but we are at about, I believe it's like 78 and a half feet or so for, for our use. And you can see that we are even further behind that. Um, the layout uh, has not changed uh, in any significant way since we first uh, presented this to you. Uh, we have a counterclockwise um, a uh, traffic pattern, uh, uh, a, a driveway on the north side off of Richard Avenue is, is an entrance only. Um, and then uh, egress only driveway on the, uh, on the south side of the property, again, on Richard's Avenue. Um, a total of 53 parking spaces are provided. Uh, 48 are required under the regulations. Um, some minor changes that were made from the last uh, uh, time that you saw this uh, were uh, some minor uh, layout um, uh, changes to the parking stalls in the rear. Um, we extended the fence lines along the north and the south property lines up to the edge of the parking. Uh, prior, it was cut off about halfway up the, uh, the, the property lines. Um, although the north uh, abutting neighbor uh, seems has already uh, beat us to it and installed the fence along most of their property line on that side. Um, so we, review, uh, we received um, comments from um, your city engineer, Mr. Uh, Wilbur Giron, uh, from your uh, public works department. Um, comments were received uh, since our last meeting on uh, October 12th. We replied to them on October 19th. Uh, this included supplemental drainage calculations, changes to the uh, drainage structure uh, outlet splash pad, um, just minor changes to the driveway, curb cut aprons, um, and we added stormwater maintenance notes to the plan. So all fairly typical and minor um, comments uh, that we received. Uh, we uh, received some more comments from Mr. Geron. Um, dated November 8th. We replied to those on November 24th. Uh, these again regarded stormwater um, comments um, and curbing along Richards Avenue. Uh, and finally, we did see, receive a final approval from, uh, from DPW on December 1st. Um, Department of Public Health. We worked very closely with the uh, staff, uh, Mr. Sean Duffy, Mr. Bill Mooney. Um, most of the discussion and changes from the, uh, from the leaching uh, system, the on-site leaching system, the building does not have public sewers, uh, revolved around the, um, uh, the calculation of flows, um, specifically around um, how much the building might be used for special events, uh, that sort of thing. Um, we uh, increased the size of the system. Uh, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's fairly over-designed. It's a very robust system. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, 
it, uh, it, it just led to some time and some additional test pitting out in the field that had to be done in order to get the, um, the approval from them. Uh, we received some comments the other day dated uh, December 6th. Um, these are very minor comments. They have to do with the piping configuration from the, um, from the point of the um, uh, sanitary system to the leaching fields. Um, so we feel we are, we are at the you know, threshold of receiving uh, final approval from them. The, the, the last comments that we received were very minor and very technical. Um, the big issues of, of, of the system have been, uh, have been resolved. Um, so with that, if there's no comments, I think that I could um, pass the uh, pass the presentation over to Mr. Aristalis, and I will bring up the uh, the planting plan. Chris, can you bring up the the rendering? Yes. Yep. While Chris is doing that, I would just like to make one comment that not only was the City of Norwalk Health Department involved in uh, evaluating the proposed uh, septic system for this property, but so was the State Health Department. And at every turn, whatever question was asked or additional information sought, um, Chris and his staff responded and adjusted the plan to meet those needs. And we did receive a sign off from Sean, Sean Duffy on Monday. Excuse me, um, Aris, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, thank you, Liz. Thank you, Chris. Uh, my name is Aris Stalis. I'm uh, the principal and uh, head landscape architect at Aris Land Studio. Our office is located in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, we were responsible for preparing the uh, planting plans and the lighting plans for the project. And so people can orient themselves on the project. The, the top portion of the site is the northern side. So as I talk about it, I'll talk about the north, the west, the south, and then the east side. One of the things that we did was uh, provide a very robust uh, um, screening plan to uh, on the perimeter of the site. And that's made up of uh, over 100 uh, trees and shrubs to provide screening. We uh, mixed that up with a variety of plants, including uh, arborvitae, um, American holly, white spruce, uh, some pines. So it, it was important to make sure that as we're developing the plant, it's not something that's just, you know, linear and uniform, but kind of a little bit mixed. That includes uh, throughout the site, 17 shade trees uh, to complement the, the, the evergreens on the site. Those shade trees are composed of a variety of oak species, elms, American hop hornbeam, as well as uh, sour woods. Um, it was important to, to bring in a, uh, a variety of trees because we're always dealing with um, new insects and diseases. And for example, the existing site had um, uh, an invasive species, the tree of heaven, uh, which has now become a host to the spotted lantern fly. And that insect um, can wreak havoc on some of our orchards, our vineyards, uh, other trees. So by providing a variety of trees, we're able to kind of you know, combat not knowing what might be coming in the future. And as I said, it's been very densely planted. Along the front of the site, we've provided um, American elms. And these are varieties that are, have been developed that are resistant to the Dutch elm disease, along with understory plantings there that includes uh, maple leaf viburnums. And we choose plants like the viburnums because of, you know, typically we don't see deer browsing on these, on these, uh, on these plant materials. Mr. That Stalis, said, Mr. Stalis, I, uh, excuse me for interrupting. Yes. Um, what are the size of the trees uh, that you'll be planting as you plant them? So the, um, the, the shade trees are 
all minimum two and a half to three inch caliper and that their height when they're installed is ranges from say 14 up to 20 feet in height. The evergreens that we're planting, those are all um, five to six feet in height at the time of planting, except for the uh, rhododendron maximums, which will be uh, that are three to four feet in height. Um, the roadies, for example, they reach a, a height of roughly 12 to 15 feet. Um, and planting, you know, sometimes people will say, well, can't you plant something bigger? And actually, it's, uh, it's actually much better for plants to be installed smaller um, to better acclimate to, to the site and actually start growing quicker than if you plant larger plants. Thank you. So there, there, there's other plants we've included, such as inkberry, um, some panicums, which is a native grass, um, uh, witch hazel, which is another native, sometimes called a tree, sometimes a shrub, uh, which is probably the first blooming plant uh, in the spring. You'll see that with yellow blooms. And that's actually in the lower, the, the lower south corner there. Um, southeast corner. So that that kind of in a, you know, kind of quickly summarizes the planting that we've provided on the site. Uh, the lighting, uh, we worked quite diligently and revised it many times to come up with a lighting scheme that one kind of illuminates the parking lot so that it's safe for the for the visitors, as you know, uh, this time of year, it feels like, you know, you go to work and you leave and it's always dark. Um, so uh, providing uh, effective lighting is, is critical. And actually lighting was one of the um, comments that the, the, the police department mentioned in their code review. Um, so that, that's why the lighting is so critical. We're providing... Um, Four poles around the perimeter. Those poles um, are not will not exceed 15 feet in height. They're set at that height, as well as we have uh, six bollards at the front of the site. Um, and one of the bollards is to also help kind of illuminate the entryway. Um, Right there, as you enter the, the site there, the, the entrance, entrance there directly below that first arrow is a bollard. So instead of having a pole there, we're using a, a, a short bollard so that to minimize how much um, light might potentially spill over in, into the street. All of the lighting um, is their full cutoff light fixtures on the, on the poles as well as what's mounted on the building and there's zero light trespass at the property line as the as the plan currently shows and that what that means is the measured foot candle which is the the level of light that's uh, found at that location for for comparison when you drive into a gas station, that light level could be anywhere from 25 to 50 foot candles, um, just so people kind of understand because typically, you know, no one, we don't realize how bright something is or how dark. Um, the other thing that's important to note with the, the lights on this, at this facility is they're all LED fixtures, which allows them, um, one to be controlled so that during off periods they could be dimmed um, or completely turned off. So there's uh, today's technology allows for much greater level of control um, than previously was available with the old style fixtures. And that I imagine, you know, is, is always good news for owners because the more you can control lights and turn them off, which I think we always have to tell our children, um, the better, because that saves money. So, um, so that's kind of in, 
again, in, in summary, the, the lighting that uh, we're providing. And with that, I will, unless there's further questions from the commission, I will turn it over to uh, Marco. I have, I have one other question. Oops. Yes. Um, is there an irrigation system planned for the uh, perimeter plantings? No, we do not plan irrigation. Uh, when we um, specify these kinds of projects, we ask that contractors guarantee the trees and shrubs for, for two years. Um, and that's really the key. I mean, if, if something is established, then you don't want to uh, provide further irrigation. It, it can actually cause more harm because then people start to overwater the plants. Thank you. I, I have one question. As you drive along Richards Avenue with all of those trees in front of the uh, property, does it screen the property somewhat? What, what do you see from the- Well, um, that, that's a very good question. So, um, it's, it's actually going to be very similar to some of the other properties along the street. Um, but it's, it's in, the, in the summertime, it actually will provide quite a bit of screening be, because below the um, shade trees there at the front, um, we have the viburnums and those viburnums will grow like six to eight feet tall. Um, and viburnums hold on to their leaves quite well into the fall. So there's actually be going to be quite a bit of screening from the front of the property as well. And uh, just, just to jump into the conversation for, again, this is Chris DeAngelis, the project civil engineer. Uh, we do have a, a, a rendering that shows the view of the building from the street from across Richards Avenue, um, which, which we'll get to in a minute when Marcos uh, Reinheimer um, discusses the art, the architectural drawings. That, that includes the screening of the trees. It's not just yes, it's, separate, it's the building as seen with the screening of the trees. That, that's correct, yes. Okay, good, thank you. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions at this point for Mr. DeAngelis or Mr. Stalis? Okay, hearing none, then I would like Marcos Reinheimer to come on and present on the architectural design and the floor plans. Yes, hi, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Marcos Reinheimer. Um, I'm with the architectural firm Gads Associates Inc. Uh, from Bridgeport, Connecticut. And we are the architects for this project. Um, I uh, would like to start uh, talking a little bit about this building. It consists about a two-story building uh, with a full basement. Uh, each floor has around 6,000 square feet of uh, gro gross area. Uh, when we start uh, with the first floor, Chris, if you just scroll down a little bit, um, if the first floor is, is the main floor that access from the main entrance lobby. And um, it was uh, designed to be used as the religious education hall. Um, it is an uh, open floor that can be subdivided into small classrooms by the use of removable and portable partitions so that smaller groups can be separate into classes. Uh, this uh, floor accommodate also two bedrooms uh, with uh, private bathrooms and uh, without any independent cooking facilities. And these bedrooms are only for the purpose of being used by the resident priest and the second bedroom by visiting scholars or musicians that eventually are invited for specific uh, services and events. Uh, this main floor is also provided with uh, a male and female bathroom facilities. Uh, with uh, a number of uh, toilets and sinks that took over uh, code specifications for the public use. Um, the second floor, uh, if you can scroll down a little bit, Chris, thank you. So the, the second floor is where the worship hall is located. Uh, this worship hall has a capacity for 240 seated occupants. As you can see, 
It is separated with the circulation area aisles between the, the seats, seat arrangement. And uh, this floor uh, also is provided with uh, a full uh, male and female accessible toilet rooms um, and uh, room for uh, shoes, uh, storage areas, and clothes. Um, now the basement floor, um, to go to slides up, please, uh, Chris. The basement uh, floor is uh, provided with uh, walkout access to the rear parking lot. So uh, it has it is also uh, fully finished and uh, accommodates a full kitchen and a dining hall. The kitchen is uh, is for the use of the festivities and uh, the meals that are provided after the services to the community. Uh, it is uh, it also um, provided with the 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 plumbing facilities as far as as accessible uh, bathrooms and uh, has also a janitor closet, a small lounge room with washer and dryer, um, and a room for placement of coats and shoes as as well. Uh, also, it has um, the space for the allocated mechanicals and utilities. Uh, the basement is is fully serviced by um, a full size elevator that access all three floors and um, it is also in compliance with uh, you know the building codes now for for the exterior of this building uh, uh, we had you know inspired the design on other gurudwaras that retain a more traditional Sikh architectural uh, with the use of uh, decorative domes cornices and arches but at the same time we used uh, more modern materials as uh, uh, synthetic and composite uh, composite stucco for the finishes as for the colors the main predominant color will be off-white and uh, the trims the accents in is is going to be in a, a golden color accent throughout including the the proposed domes on top of the building. So with that, this this is 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 the building. We have the rendering as well that Chris can share with the uh, uh, with the screen right now. For we have the the one that was required from the commission uh, at the last review to depict the the street view. So it is an artistic rendering, but uh, but it's it's, it's it's pretty close to what's going to look from the street as far as the, the this is the building alone, but we have one from the street that can be seen uh, with the, the parking. So this is, is the street view uh, from Richard Street. As you can see, the, the proposed landscaping, uh, it is screened most of the the view of the building itself. And as the building sits further than the actual uh, houses, as far as setback requirements, you know, it's, it's, it's very, um, it's minimal impact to the, to the main uh, road as far as, as uh, uh, imposing the, the architectural to the, to the view of the street. So with Mr. that, if Mr. Reinheimer, uh, can you can you go back uh, to um, two renderings to the uh, exterior of the building, please? Yeah, that's fine. Um, as I look at uh, the the right hand uh, side, uh, where all of those uh, lower windows are. Uh, is that uh, where you're going to be using the uh, synthetic uh, stucco material? A yes, kind the, of the, a cement, the whole, cementitious board? Yes, the exterior of the building, the main, the, the white uh, part that you see on the rendering, it's uh, is the stucco. So, you know, because of our uh, region, we, we uh, don't usually uh, use the the cement stucco, we use a synthetic stucco, which is a more modern, flexible, and, and more resistant uh, material that will look like a stucco, but is, is actually uh, synthetic. Well, it's not cement. 
as as your attorney has pointed out, um, you know, you don't undergo uh, an architectural review. Uh, however, we we do have some experience um, with this uh, stucco material because on um, on at least one of the buildings at um, Waypoint, they have used it, and um, we've seen it where it's been kicked in um and with, with, without too much difficulty uh it it cracks and i was just wondering if it would make sense to reconsider going up at least several feet um with um, um at least a cement base uh to protect um uh, that area of the building yes we have a portion of it which is um uh, if you look at Chris on the side elevations, that is the basement portion of the building, which sits halfway uh, under the ground and, and the other half is above ground. That section is actually the concrete foundation. That whole section is covered with the actual uh, cement stucco. And then the area above that line, which is the first floor and second floor, which is, is uh, most of it above the the area of contact with someone as far as damaging is, is the synthetic stucco, as you can see on the side elevation right there that Chris was pointing it out. And, and is that a largely a, a cost saving measure? I'm, I'm sorry, as far the as- use, The use of the uh, stucco board as opposed to uh, cement. Uh, no, it's, it, just, it's, it's just because the, the main structure is not built out of CMUs, uh, for example. And when we install uh, a cement-based stucco over a framed structure, mm -hmm. it tends to damage quickly because you don't have the same uh, stability as uh, or the structure as a concrete wall. That's why we're doing uh, the, the cement con uh, stucco over the concrete foundation wall but where uh, the second, uh, first and second floor, where we have the frame, the wood frame walls, on that section, we're doing the stack, which works like a siding, but other than doing a normal, uh, you know, clapboard or what type of a siding, the stack is the, the one that goes more with the, the you know, the, our, our, you know, New England style of architecture as far as resistance to the weather. And that's what, and also has the insulation under the stack, which creates the, the insulation needed as well. Uh, and that's the reason that we are going with the synthetic stack on the upper structure. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone have any further comments for Mr. Reinheimer? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Mr. Reinheimer, were you responsible for the um, drawings for the seating layout uh, that you showed in the interior? The design was done by our architectural team. Our head architect is Mr. John Gads, which uh, was unable to attend the meeting, but I'm part of the team. So if you have any questions and concerns of the design, I'm here to answer them. My question is, can you explain in detail, um, using measurements, how this um, seating chart and 240 seat capacity was arrived at? Yes, definitely. When you design a place of worship, you have different ways to calculate the space. One is being with a, a fixed seating, which is the case in here, uh, and that you allocate the space where your seating is going to be, taking away the maneuvering aisle, taking consideration your ADA accessibility spaces, and then you calculate based on the square footage. When you have uh, fixed seats, uh, based on, on code requirement, you have seven uh, square feet per occupant or in this, uh, this designated area. And that's what we use for the calculation. So we have uh, seven um, occupants per square, per square feet. When you're using uh, uh, a space where you don't have fixed seats, then you have 15 um, uh, square feet per person. So it's a different type of a calculation. So we're using here the calculation for fixed seat with seven uh, square, square feet per, uh, per seat. So your um, drawing indicates on there, excuse me, one second, 4,725 square feet. 
Yes, the seating uh, area where this, the 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 chairs are are accommodated, which that's the base of calculation for a worship uh, space, is 840 square feet for each aisle. The 4,725 square feet is the gross area of the whole space, including the stage, including the 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 two rooms on the left of the the hall right there. Um, and, and also the entry lobby area. So the, when you do the calculation for the seating is the designated area for the chairs for, for fixed seating arrangement. And that's the base of a calculation for this uh, place of worship. So are you um, representing then that this uh, calculation that has been done um, represents maximum seating capacity for this area? Yes, it is based on seating arrangement. And, no, I didn't uh, ask it. I'm asking you, is it maximum seating areas, maximum seating capacity for this area? Yes, it is the, the max seating arrangements for fixed seating based on uh, 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 the plans have been also reviewed by uh, the fire, city fire marshal. Uh, and uh, this was presented to him. He asked us to give the calculation for those areas which was provided. And he was, uh, he informed us that uh, a seating uh, capacity will be placed invisible at certain locations of the, the, um, the Gurudwara at the entrance and some areas inside of the, the, the worship hall as well. So. Yes, I, I saw that in the application, but what I'm asking you is, as an architect, are these 240 seats the maximum seating capacity? Not what the fire marshal told you, I'm talking about the area. Yes, it is based on fixed seating, which is the design of this place of worship. So the design, you're saying is what's driving this 240 seats or is it the fire marshal? What, what, code, what's driving code, code, code compliance. When you, you have two ways to design uh, the place of worship. One is, is with fixed seating and one is with uh, uh, open hall with no seating. Mm -hmm. And Mr. So, Rowena, I, I might add Mr. Rowena that uh, any other house of worship upon which parking was calculated was based upon a very similar plan. Uh, whatever the maximum seating capacity as proposed on a plan submitted to the staff and submitted to prior commissions. And a, a plan such as this has always been accepted um, based upon the representation by the applicant that this is the maximum seating capacity in the worship hall. And that is what we are, we've always suggested, and that's what we will confirm. And that is certainly a condition of approval that this commission can impose if it decides to approve this Gurdwara. The maximum seating capacity is 240 and will be 240 and no more than 240. Well, Attorney Suchi, I've only been on the board for three years, so I have no experience with this type of application before this one. Uh, but I did look at the code to see what it says. And my reading of 118.12.20 indicates that it's one parking space per five seats based on maximum seating capacity. And that's exactly what we're showing you. This is the maximum seating capacity, 240. That you want or that's available? That is available. But you have to take away from the, the square footage of the gross square footage. I there understand are... that. That's why I was asking your architect what the calculations were. I, I think he's answered that. The maximum seating capacity is 240 with fixed seating. And that's important, it's fixed seating. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Reinheimer? Okay, hearing none, may we move on to Neil Olinsky? Uh, professional engineer with SLR Consulting, our traffic engineer. Neil? Yes, thank you, Attorney Suchi. Uh, for the record, 
My name is Neil Olinsky. I'm a pro professional transportation planner with SLR Consulting uh, out of New Haven. Um, our team here worked on the traffic study, traffic studies for this proposed development. Um, over the last several months, we've produced several documents. We produced a, our original traffic study in August. We produced a response to City of Norwalk traffic mobility parking department comments <clears throat> in September. We responded to third party peer reviewer comments, AKRF, uh, in November. And last week we responded to uh, a minor second round of city comments. Um, I'd like to note that we did not do a parking study. We were, were not hired to do that uh, for reasons that attorney Suchi mentioned. Um, a parking study, traffic study are two different things. In a nutshell, traffic studies look at traffic flows. Parking studies look at vehicle storage. So regarding traffic studies, a traffic study in a nutshell is an analysis of traffic flow conditions with and without the proposed development when we're talking about traffic studies for development projects. <clears throat> One of the first things we do when we do a traffic study is we estimate the amount of traffic that we think a new development will generate. Industry data for this type of religious center is pretty sparse. So what we did is we, we looked at uh, traffic, um, we looked at attendance numbers from the SEEK Center, and we conferred with the Connecticut Department of Transportation to come up with uh, what we call trip generation estimates. Um, and in, in essence, in our original study, we focused on two peer periods, Sunday, which is their, their busiest period, and Friday, which is much more lightly attended. Um, on a Sunday, we've estimated in our original traffic study that during their say arrival peak hour, roughly between say 11, 11.15 to 12.15, <clears throat> midday on a Sunday, there may be around 70 vehicle trips. Uh, that's a combination of to and from the site. During the arrival peak hour, those will be mostly more so entering trips. During their departure hour, we tend to focus on hourly periods. Or during their departure hour, roughly 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Again, roughly 70 total vehicle trips. Again, well, this in this case, it'd be mostly leaving. I'd like to point out that we, in our September response to the city traffic mobility, mobility and parking department comments, uh, we, we reanalyzed the traffic conditions with increased traffic estimates for the site to be what we call conservatively high. So in essence, these are, we reanalyze things looking at it based on what we think would be typical conditions and then more so conservatively high or inflated conditions. In that case, we look at traffic flows uh, with roughly around 115 peak hour trips uh, associated with the development instead, instead of 70. Um, I'd like to note that um, Sunday attendance is actually rather fluid. Um, attendees don't all arrive at the same exact time and leave at the same exact time. It's, it's more fluid than that. You have some folks who come and go throughout a roughly two hour period on a Sunday, for example. Um, a key point, when we looked at the two traffic analysis analyses, we didn't find any traffic concerns at the site or at the offsite intersections nearby. <clears throat> so regardless if it's 70 or 115 vehicle trips, we didn't find any traffic conge congestion issues or, or any expected traffic impacts. We looked at traffic flows at the intersections of Richards Avenue at Philo Street, Richards Avenue at Scribner, as well as Richard Avenue at the site driveways. With or without this development, we're expecting these intersections to operate during the Sunday peak periods, as well as the Friday peak per periods, as mostly levels of service A's and B's, which is really good. And I think there's one movement with a projected level of service C. 
uh, during the Sunday, uh, one of the Sunday hours. To define level of service for anybody who, who may not be aware, a level of service uh, in a traffic study is essentially a measure of traffic flow and motorist delays. Uh, it's on a scale of A, level of service A to F, level of service A. It's generally no, no delays, it's very little delays of anything. Level of service F at the under, other end of the range is long delays and congestion. So A's and B's, one C is quite good. Generally speaking, levels of service D or better during uh, peak periods is, is generally considered acceptable in, in suburban areas. The one level of service C that we're projecting, uh, we're only talking about 15 to 16 seconds of average delay. Uh, this is in the left turn lane of Phillips Street at the stop sign approach at Richards during the Sunday hour, uh, I think of 11.15 to 12.15 p.m. Um, so not a, not a big concern in terms of traffic. <clears throat> Um, these intersections that I'm talking about, we counted them in June, and we projected them or grow, grew them out to year 2023, which is when the development is expected to open if it, if it gets approved and built. Um, in, in a nutshell, everybody, for the most part, understands that Sunday Sundays in general are pretty light, probably the lightest day of the week for uh, roadway traffic levels. So again, it's not a, not a huge concern. They, their Friday service, which as I mentioned, is more lightly attended, doesn't even start till 7 p.m. Um, after the, your typical commuter peak uh, period. <clears throat> Just making sure I'm hitting on all my points. You know, another thing we look at with traffic studies is motorist sight lines at the driveways, new driveways in particular. We looked at those and they are expected to be sufficient. Um, over time, there may, may need to be some trimming of vegetation and low-hanging low branches, um, but that's pretty typical. Th those things will have to get trimmed and maintained as needed over time. But in, uh, in a nutshell, um, the sight lines are expected to be sufficient. Um, so that, that is the traffic, uh, our traffic study summary of it. And, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank well, this you. is my my question is not uh, truly a, a traffic question, and Liz may have to answer it. Um, <clears throat> but if uh, you're showing somewhere between perhaps uh, uh, seventy and possibly, though you're saying it's conservative, one hundred and fifteen uh, trips in each direction during the two peak periods, the, more, the uh, uh, beginning of service, and I guess the end of service. Um, how does that square with uh, the uh, number of parking spaces? And what, what, what there's that delta there of uh, 15 or so at least uh, between the, uh, the trips and the parking spaces. Um, what's happening with those cars? So, as I mentioned, uh, we didn't do a detailed parking study. We really didn't do any parking study. The traffic numbers I, that show up in our um, September response to the city department comments were, were essentially inflated numbers. They're probably heavy on the entering or the during the arrival period and heavier, too heavy on the exiting flow during the dismissal or the departure period. I think in reality, you're, what we're going to find is, is a more um, even in and out. So what that equates to essentially is the fluid nature of, of their services on Sunday. Um, from what I understand, and attorney such you can probably, well, the applicant as well, can explain this further, but um, not everybody even stays for a half an hour. You have some attendees who show up for a prayer service who may only be there for 15 minutes uh, or half an hour, and then they leave. And then you have some folks who will be arriving later in that uh, midday period, and they'll be able to use that same parking spot. So there's turnover of parking spaces occurring. So it's not an easy or simplified 
delta uh, in and out kind of equation there. The, the parking spaces are going to turn over and not everybody's going to be there for, uh, you know, 90 minutes. There, there's going to be some people there for shorter periods of time. And there'll be some coming and going throughout the middle of the day on a Sunday. Well, while I understand what you're saying, um, you, you really can't have it both ways. You can't say that for the <clears throat> purposes of your study, uh, you used a, uh, uh, a high number of 115 uh, and then say, but that's not really what we're expecting. Um, if, you're, if you're using that number to show uh, that it's not going to cause a, uh, a, a traffic problem, it nonetheless appears as if even with some turnover, uh, that it might cause a parking problem. As I mentioned, um, the 115 number wasn't on our original traffic study. Our original traffic study had a 70 peak hour trips, which was roughly 60 entering in 50 or 60 entering during the arrival period and say 10 exiting. That delta right there is more realistic mm -hmm. to what we expect, roughly 50. Well, if, Why if, was it bumped up to, to the 100 then, remind us? It was, it was bumped up to the 100 to respond to city comments to do a conservative analysis to make sure that even with inflated traffic numbers, we can affirm that there's not expected to be any traffic congestion impacts. So it's sort of a just an overly conservative uh, exercise. So you're saying it, 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 it was done essentially uh, for um, traffic engineering analysis and not for parking analysis. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Shulman, that's exactly correct. For example, the neighboring, one of the neighboring houses of worship, Temple Shalom, has 174 maximum seating capacity and has 35 parking spaces on site. So the, the one would, if, if you were to combine both the traffic analysis and link it to parking, the same question would be raised, but they're separate. The, the maximum capacity and seating requirements um, and the ratio that's, that is um, applied to the maximum seating capacity based upon fixed seats determines for us the num maximum number of parking spaces we need to provide on the site. The traffic analysis is separate and distinct from that and doesn't relate to parking. It relates to generation trip generation, as you aptly pointed out. And that, and that might, give me some, might give me comfort re regarding uh, regular um, weekly uh, uh, services. Um, uh, I'd be a little more concerned um, um, about things like weddings, funerals. Uh, now, you, you, you indicate that uh, you do have an arrangement for the holiday in April. Um, is there a plan for general overflow for uh, these other, uh, if you will, special events? Sure. Uh, first, weddings and funerals in the Sikh religion, like any other denomination, are private events. It's not a communal event that the entirety of the congregation attends. So if someone is attending a wedding, they're there by invitation to a private event. So it would be some members of the, the congregation, but typically the family members. And the same is true for funeral. Um, in any denomination is a private event that um, members of the deceased are invited to, to attend. And some members of a, a religious community would attend out of respect. So I don't envision that there are issues with private services such as weddings or funerals. For the larger events, such as the April 14th Celebration Day, that is the day in which we have made arrangements with Parks and Recreation to rent spaces at Fox Run School, to do the same with Norwalk Community College uh, when the time arises, and also, which we didn't mention earlier, my client has also uh, suggested to me and to share with you that they are more than willing to direct their congregants to public parking lots and shuttle their congregants at their own expense to and from the Gurdwara on April 14th on that day of celebration. So that should accommodate overflow needs on the most significant day in their religion, April 14th. Well, 
would there be any requirement? I mean, I, I understand what you're saying about the weddings and the funerals, but occasionally, at least I've heard of people having huge weddings it, where it's not just part of the family and part of the congregation, you know, several hundred people are invited for one reason or another. Is there any way, have you made any arrangement, any, have any idea what you do with all the parking in any, of, in any situation like that? Well, once again, you have to keep in mind that the parking requirement established in the city uh, zoning regulations specifies the number of parking spaces that we provide and we meet and exceed that. Other arrangements will be made as necessary, but that expects this denomination to respond and be treated differently than everyone else. Um, I'm sure there are other denominations that have um, holy day ceremonies or other events in which uh, larger numbers attend the ceremony from time to time. And I don't suspect, and I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not in doubt that there have not been requirements or conditions imposed upon other houses of worship to do something similar to what you're asking. However, my, the, the Sikh community wants it Gurdwara to, to function properly and to have a, a working relationship with its neighbors and to fit into the neighborhood. So I'm sure if they have other events that they anticipate larger number of congregants attending and other family members that they will make the other necessary arrangements uh, such as the ones that they are suggesting. In addition, uh, it's, it's not, I don't believe there's been any issue recognizing that their Gurdwara on West Avenue that's been in existence for 25 years has presented any parking issue to the neighborhood. I recognize that there is on-street parking on Elm Street and West Avenue, but the, this congregation is cognizant of its needs and should its needs exceed for a day or days, it will make the necessary arrangements as it has already done for the April 14th celebration. Thank you. A uh, question for staff. Uh, Steve, is there uh, anything that, um, um, we haven't covered with regard to this uh, parking issue uh, that was uh, brought up by uh, our uh, peer reviewer. Um, our peer review is on if, if you wanted to question him directly regarding that. Um, I think it's just getting to your comfort level with um, the events or any other ancillary activities or like I know you were touching on the the weddings and the funerals, um, if, if you're satisfied with the responses that you received, I think one thing I was kind of thinking of as well, it's kind of hard to say how many people at a wedding, I mean, as Ms. Wells pointed out, weddings can be large, it all depends, and funerals sometimes, you know, it's not necessarily restricted to a certain number of people, it, it depends on who is, you know, the, you know, the deceased at that time can draw a, a, a large crowd, depending on, you know, the individual, I suppose. So I think that's something you want to just make sure you have a very firm handle on in terms of all the impacts related to that, as well as just making sure that we, you know, we, we really hone in on the, the difference between the, the, the parking issues that Mr. Olinsky related to by the increase in one versus what was versus the original submittal. So it'd be something, you know, I don't think you have to make a decision on it tonight, something you could, you know, further contemplate and then discuss at your subsequent meeting. Steve, isn't that the same problem though that every house of worship would have with the big weddings and the big funerals? If they meet- Yeah, the I, I, I think that's something that, that's correct. The attorney Suchi had pointed out that's the same issue every one of those has. You have to then take a look at those properties and then you know compare them that way. Is do, do they have the overflow capacity to do that? Do they have long driveways where they could you know, park cars for those instances versus having, um, you know, the entire site basically dominated by parking. So I think those are some of the things you need to just keep in mind as you're, you're working through that question. Well, in the um, interest of uh, exploring this as fully as possible, let's bring in uh, the uh, peer reviewer and see if uh, commission members have any questions for him. Good evening, everyone. This is Mike Beattie from AKRS. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions um, or you want me to kind of summarize the parking from our point of view. Um, why don't we start there? Okay. Um, 
So as stated, the site meets the code that's for the city with the five with five spaces, with space for five fixed seats. So look at the code, it meets that. Um, the reason why we brought it up was looking at the second traffic study, which um, replicated 115 trip, est uh, trip estimates. The 115 was based off the 240 max capacity. So feasibly, if someone, if this place was at max capacity, you could experience that level of traffic. While typically trips don't always correlate to parking, from our understanding, and we're getting some more details now, um, we assume that people would park there for more than five minutes, that they could be there parked there for the full hour. So if you look at that number of trips in, the 100, 15, number of trips out, 15. Um, you're looking at 100 vehicles that would have to park on site. Um, and the concern here would be there is no on-street parking on Richards. There is no overflow. Um, so in that scenario where if they were at mass capacity and they applied the factors that they did, which seemed reasonable, two and a half people per vehicle, um, from what we saw, there would be a deficiency in parking. Um, we don't have the details on what percentage of people stayed up for five minutes versus 10 minutes. We assume based on what we read, it's an hour long service. So people would be there for close to an hour. Um, and there's also events happening before and after. So the we weren't sure what the turnover is based on what we had. That's why we noted that while it's meeting the code in reality, if they have max, max attendance, um, the numbers didn't line up um, and there's no street parking. So that's at least our view and where and why we noted this in our memo. Well, how do we square everything we've heard with what you've said? Uh, so in the past and other places, there's a couple options. One, again, they are meeting code. Um, you would hope that they also design a site that actually meets the demand of their patrons because you want them to be able to park. Um, what we've asked applicants in the past for other locations is to provide a detailed parking study, how people arrive to the site and how long they stay. Um, show how, how space are, spaces are turned over. And that's a way to justify that even if from what we see, people say for an hour, it's not sufficient. You could ask them to say, well, give us a profile of how people interact with the site. Um, prove there is actually a turnover. Um, it could be the case that if people are not staying for the four hour, you absolutely could have turnover and spaces are used more than once in an hour. Um, just the data we have does indicate what that would be. Um, so there's one way to resolve it if you wanted to have some comfort in knowing that the supply would meet the demand based on the profile of this being more fluid than a strict one hour service. Attorney Suchi, uh, can you respond to that? Absolutely. Um, you, as you will recall, we appeared before you in October. And at that time, I shared with you personal observation of what took place during the services on a Sunday and invited anyone to do the same. Um, AKRF could have done that. They had the opportunity to do so. And if they were uncomfortable with um, attending the service, they clearly could have parked on Elm Street and, and watched the comings and goings of the congregation. However, having said that, I have to remind you that a parking study is not something that's in your regulations to be required of this applicant or any other house of worship, nor has it ever been asked of any other house of worship. We provided the parking calculations for maximum seating capacity based upon fixed seating. The parking calculation ratio was applied to it. And even as Mr. Beatty just mentioned, the site meets the code. Your inquiry about parking should end there. It should not go beyond that and, and uh, speculate on what could, what could happen or what might happen. This Gurdwara, this house of worship has been designed to meet the code and it meets the code in exactly the same way every other house of worship has designed its, co its, its parking requirement and has been reviewed. Just to call your attention to one most recent one, as I mentioned before, the Northeast Community Church on East Avenue. It presented a floor plan showing maximum seating capacity of 125 that required 20, 25 parking spaces. No other inquiry took place beyond the presentation and submission of that, that plan and that calculation. The same is true for all of the other churches and houses of worship for which I provided the memo 
um, describing them, describing their needs, describing their maximum seating capacities, describing their parking requirements. To require this house of worship to do something different that every other house of worship has not been asked to do is unequal treatment to them. And I will stand by that. And I think that is something you should be very concerned about requiring and requesting. The site meets the code in terms of parking and the inquiry on parking really should end there. Um, I don't know what else to tell you other than parking and traffic are two different beasts. They, they relate yet they are not tied together. And the traffic study that has been uh, provided by SLR revealed to you that the levels of service, which is required to be evaluated, are either A or B, and there is one turning motion that is level of service C. The traffic study reveals that traffic generated by this house of worship is more than acceptable and more than meets your standards. Don't know what else I can tell you, but I, I caution you on requiring things that have never ever been required of any other house of worship. Thank you. Such, if I could ask a follow-up question. Uh, first of all, you've reminded us at least four times tonight to be careful about how we judge. Um, I'm trying to be careful. Part of the special permit application requires that we um, protect the neighbors, as you know. And <clears throat> I'm not clear, I'm still not clear as to what was wrong with what I was asking you in terms of, and asking your architect in terms of the maximum seating capacity. You said to me, it's how it's always been done. And I said to you, this is my first foray into a church. So just explain to me why my question about maximum seating capacity and determining the number of seats and parking spaces was wrong. I wasn't suggesting, Mr. Rowena, that you were wrong. All I was suggesting is that the way in which this house of worship provided information on its maximum seating capacity is exactly the same as every other house of worship that I evaluated has done. They've provided a plan, so, signed so, and sealed by so an does architect. That mean, does that mean that are you saying that every other house of worship represents how what their maximum capacity is and that that's it? That's what we're supposed to take? Uh, based upon the analysis, my review of 15 files, yeah, a plan was provided, signed and sealed by our, an architect. It showed what the maximum capacity was, and the parking calculation was based upon that number. That's well, all I'm, I'm not familiar with the East Avenue piece that you're talking about, but the houses of worship that are in the area that we are talking about um, and the house of worship that I'm familiar with across the street from my house are acres of property. And as our uh, traffic consultant, our traffic consultant pointed out, um, there's no place to go on this after the 55 parking spaces. And there's no parking on Richards Avenue, as we know, so that leaves uh, Fireside Court and whatever the other one-way street is for uh, overflow parking, which happens, I guess, quite a bit there. Um, but the point is, is that you're, you're bringing an application um, that absolutely maximizes the use of the property. And yes, it, does it meet zoning requirements? I guess it does. But I think that we're entitled as part of our <clears throat> review of a special permit application to consider these questions. And I don't see it, it's certainly not from my standpoint and my um, trying to punish your clients or prejudice against your clients or however you want to put it. I'm just concerned about the effect that this substantial project on this property is going to have on the neighbors. And, and Mr. Arena, your concerns are certainly valid concerns, and I in no way meant to um, insinuate that they were not. All I'm trying to do is to explain that um, the regulations as exist today are the ones that we, divide, we developed under. And were there other um, desires or other preferences for whether it's the size of the lot or the density of buildings for house of worship or parking. Uh, there's an there was an opportunity to change those, to address concerns yes, there was. that may have existed for several years. 
So my clients buy a piece of property with the full knowledge that the use is allowed and they design in accordance with the regulations. And all we're saying is we comply. Should there but be other- I, I just wanna make sure that you and I are understanding each other. You, you're telling me that you comply because you've submitted an application that says this is the maximum capacity and we have to accept that. And if that's the case, if, if that's what you're saying, I understand now why you were questioning what I was saying. I'm not saying that I buy it, but I understand it. Well, all I, but what I'm also saying to you, Mr. Rowena, is, is to, to re require something more um, of this denomination is very different. It's, it's not what, this denomination, but it, but it's it this is. project. No, it's, it's this denomination's project. No, no, okay, don't put words in my mouth. But, but nothing like this has been asked of any other house of worship. So, so does that mean that we can't learn as we go along? That oh, means that just because we made a mistake 15 times in a row, it can't be addressed? Of course you can, but there's a process to make changes to address those concerns. No, you, you, the changes that you're talking about are the way things have been done. The, cha the, the code is pretty clear as to what the parking requirements are supposed to be. But I don't want to beat this to death. I just wanted to understand why you and I were not on the same uh, page. Seemingly. So thank you for clarifying. Are there any other questions for <clears throat> uh, Attorney Sachi or members of your team? If not, uh, Attorney Sachi will turn it back to you. Uh, at this point, we'd be delighted to hear what the members of the public have to say, either supporters or those in opposition. And once that has concluded, whether it's tonight or I suspect on January 6th, we would like to reserve time for rebuttal and final comments. Uh, that, that's fine. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, could I ask one quick question? Sure. January 6th, is, uh, are we still sitting as a commission then? Or is yeah, that yes, we are. Uh, the uh, new Planning and Zoning Commission doesn't get uh, seated until January 11th. Ah. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm going to just uh, remind uh, people who are going to speak. Um, we are showing at the moment 152 uh, people participating uh, here. Um, you get only one opportunity to speak. Please make sure that uh, with that opportunity, you say everything uh, you wish to. Um, but uh, we, for the sake of uh, both the commission members and for the public um, who are uh, listening, uh, hearing the same thing over and over, may not be helpful to us or to you. If you agree with something that someone else has said, simply saying it may be sufficient uh, rather than going uh, into uh, uh, extended detail. Uh, with that, uh, Brian, uh, turn it over to you. And uh, again, ask that uh, uh, as you speak, you uh, give us your name uh, and your address, Brian. So for members of the public, if you're looking to speak either in favor or opposition to this application, uh, you can use the raise your hand tool now. Um, it's at the bottom of your screen if you're hovering over everybody's faces. Um, and if you're dialed in on a phone, you could hit star nine and that will raise your hand. Um, if you wanna use your camera, please let me know before you start um, and I can uh, enable that access for you. Uh, so with that, I will bring over uh, Barbara Gerlich. Oh, I wasn't expecting to go quickly. Um, my name's Barbara Garlick and I live at 280 Richards Avenue. I own the property across the street from the proposed building. And um, I have several concerns. Um, mostly they're about growth and parking. At least those are the ones I want to address tonight. Um, I'd like some clarity on the 18,000 square foot structure that only has a 240 people maximum capacity in the worship area, because I understand it's three levels, 6,000 per. So if the worship area is only 6,000 square feet, 
what's happening on the other two levels. At the same time, there's maybe 240 people in the worship area. Like, I'm not sure if you guys are supposed to answer while I go now, or do I just keep going? No, just uh, uh, keep going. Uh, both the the um, uh, applicant um, will uh, respond after everyone's had an opportunity to speak. Okay. So in other words, if the children are in the education center at the same time, or there's some people down in the dining hall all at the same time, what happens with that 240 pe people maximum? Um, also, I understand this clergy and staff that there's like four people that live on the property. Where will they park? Were they counted as part of the 240 capacity? Um, I also understand they have a 5,000 square foot building now with about 200 members. And if they don't intend to increase their population, I don't understand why they need to build a building that's three and a half times the size for no apparent reason other than to be inconsiderate neighbors. Like, why do they need something three and a half times the size? Um, I also understand that on Sundays, they expect about 150 people for lunch. Um, I read that right off of their website today. Um, 150 people for lunch concerns me um, because as they grow, what's gonna happen then? And where are these people gonna park? Um, their intent to not grow means they literally have to turn people away. Are they willing to do that? From what I understand, their philosophy is all are welcome near or far. So how do you intend to not grow your membership? Um, whether they want to or not, and I'm pretty sure that they do, uh, they anticipate this Gudwara to be the biggest and most beautiful in the state and the surrounding area. So how can they expect not to entice new worshipers from miles around? If it's three and a half times the size of their existing building, as the saying goes, if you build it, they will come. And I have no doubt they will come from miles around beyond Westchester and Fairfield counties. This is not to mention the high holy days, the multiple annual holidays and festivities, but I know you mentioned them already, so I'll leave that alone. But what will um, Norwalk be able to put in place to help us regulate their capacity at 240 people? Like how are we as the neighbors gonna be able to have some sort of control because they're saying they're not gonna grow beyond 240. And that's their absolute max. And then my other concerns were about parking. They're putting in a 53 space parking lot plus three handicapped spots. And that's supposed to manage their 240 members because of some unrealistic and outdated rule that Norwalk has about five people per car load. So that means 48 spaces is all they need. But what happens when they average three people per car load and they need 66 spaces? What happens then? It sounds good on paper, but it's not reality. So where will the overflow go if not on, on the streets, it, which are not allowed because there's no street parking in, on Richards or Philo or Bet Marley or any of the neighboring streets? Um, I read in the Norwalk Hour today, and Ms. Sushi concerned it, um, confirmed it tonight that they were able to get a parking agreement with Fox Run for the High Holy Day on April 14th. Um, this year, or, or in 2022, that's a weekday and school's in session. So I don't understand how, you know, I mean, obviously they're not going to be ready this year, but that's going to happen in common years that it'll be a, a school day and school in, is in session. So how is Fox Run allowed to just go ahead and grant in advance that they can have that parking lot? I'd like to see who did it because um, some of my neighbors did some research and we couldn't find a single source of parking agreements from Fox Run. And if school's in session, they cannot offer their parking lot to anyone else. Um, the closest public transportation is a mile away. They've been told they cannot use the nearby lots for overflow parking. So what happens? They lie to us now and tell us they're gonna be no more than 240 members, but suddenly they grow and then the problems arise and it's too late. I can foresee this turning very ugly, very quickly with cars parking illegally. And all they can do is say, we're sorry, we didn't intend to grow. 
And you, the City of Norwalk Planning and Zoning Commission, will know it's easier to beg forgiveness than to ask permission or get support now from residents. Because if it's after the fact when the building is built and the damage is done, then what happens? I'm really sorry, Norwalk. You need to look at this without your blinders on. You cannot be afraid of a loop just because you had a bad experience once before. If this goes through, my neighbors and I will have some very serious demands that we'll need to put in place so that we can get the protection of the special permit. Ms. Sushi got, got very defensive tonight in regards to some of the parking concerns and the 240 seat seating area. And I really don't like the threat. Um, and I also just want to know why they're building something three times larger than they need if that's if their true intent is not to grow. They would resolve so many concerns if they would just be honest and considerate. Find a place in Norwalk that can handle the crowds and the noise and the parking. And they deserve to worship freely and to welcome all and not have to stifle your growth. So thank you for your time. That's really all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next we have uh, Farhan Mamon. I'll bring you over. And again, let me know if you want camera access and I'll set that up. Yeah, please, if you could bring me on camera, I'd appreciate it. Sure, give me one second. <clears throat> of course, I would have to start my camera too. There you go. There we go. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Farhan Memon. I live on 15 Pequot Drive uh, in, in Norwalk. Uh, I've been a resident of Norwalk uh, for 15 years. Um, I, as many, some of you might know, uh, was involved in the special permit application for the Al Madani Islamic Center of Norwalk uh, that resulted in a settlement uh, with the city. Um, I'm also uh, the chairperson of the Connecticut chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, uh, the state chapter of America's largest Muslim civil rights organization. So I speak to you as both a resident and someone who heads a, a civil rights organization. I'm here today to support wholeheartedly uh, the Gurdwara's uh, construction uh, and establishment um, at the site. Every religious community deserves its own place to worship. Uh, and certainly uh, having gone through this experience myself, it's one thing to rent a facility or to have a, a or to locate your house of worship at uh, a facility, but it's quite another thing to have one that's purpose built uh, for worship. Um, Ms. Gerlich suggested earlier, uh, you know, what's the point of building something larger when you already have a congregation that's being served? And I think that's an assumption on her part. Um, you know, I can tell you firsthand that when you do have a house of worship that's purpose built, uh, that has religious classroom facilities and a dining facility, uh, the nature of your congregation changes for the better. Not to say that it grows, but rather the experience that you have at the congregation is something different and something more meaningful for the people that worship there um, in the first place. Uh, so it, it's important for the Sikh community in Norwalk who have been here for 25 years or more uh, to have a facility that meets their needs, that serves their community. The fact that it's been here for 25 years and has a certain size, I think is indicative of the fact that it is at its natural size. Uh, one shouldn't assume that just because it has a new house of worship, that somehow it's going to magically grow. People in other communities who are Sikh have their own place of worship that are close to them in their community. Um, and one could expect that they're going to continue to go to their own places of worship um, in those areas. Um, the other thing I would say, um, and you know, I'm not uh, the attorney for, for this uh, applicant, um, but I would suggest to you based on my own experience that some of the comments that I've heard this evening, uh, both from the commissioners, uh, as well as from uh, participants, um, you know, echo some of the comments that we heard during our application uh, for Al-Madani. Um, and, 
that it's interesting that um, I think that the commissioners have to be um, educated again about RELUPA. Um, the fact that in certain, if not most situations, it trumps, no pun intended, um, local land use law. Um, and so while um, you know, Commissioner Rowena uh, may feel that he's entitled, as he put it, to ask uh, certain questions, and of course he is, um, there is the reality uh, that we have federal law that governs the establishment of religious sites. And that ought to also be um, respected and for the purpose that it was enacted, uh, which is to protect the religious and First Amendment rights uh, of uh, religious communities, uh, no matter um, who they are. Now, of course, there isn't, you know, some might say that there is an inconsistency between parking and uh, traffic generation, uh, but the rules and standards are what they are. And, and that's really the only thing that the commission uh, should be considering. If there is an inconsistency, um, there have been several years in which uh, the commission had a chance to uh, change the rules uh, through the process uh, that uh, is in place in the city of Norwalk. Uh, there may be many reasons why it's chosen not to, uh, but this applicant deserves to be considered on the basis of the rules that are on the book right now. Thank you for your time this evening, and I hope that you will vote in favor of this application. Thank you. Okay, uh, next, I saw Dr. Bhavna, you had your hand raised and then took it down and then put it back up, so hoping you. Brian, could you change the camera? Sure, give me one second. Okay, you should be good to access your camera now. Well, um, good evening, everyone. Um, I had addressed, I'd sent in a letter earlier, but here I am. Um, my name is Dr. Bhavna Kanpur, um, and I currently reside at 199 West Norwalk Road. I've been a resident of Norwalk for the past decade and uh, currently the vice chair of pathology here at Nuance Hospital Network. I res my family and me, we moved to West Norwalk in the December of 2010. And um, we've raised our kids in Norwalk. My both boys went to Temple Shalom for pre-K and Columbus Magnet School for the elementary education. We are completely integrated in the West Norwalk neighborhood. And to be fairly honest, consider Costco as a second home. <laughs> Both me and my husband, Afneet and Bhavna, we write and support and are here in support of the Sikh Gurdwara on Richards Avenue. We've had the chance to go through some of the objections that have been raised and would like to make just a few points. We do consider and believe that the project is completely within the rules and framework that have been laid out by the town. To take the peak traffic and peak audience numbers and make a decision on the same, we feel is neither appropriate nor fair. Our family has been visiting the Gurdwara for the past decade and can assure you that the congregation really only meets on Friday evening and Sunday morning. Moreover, during those hours, the traffic flow is flowing and continuous. To be put in mathematical terms, the Gurdwara really has an audience for five to six hours during most weeks and if you really do the math, that's less than 5% of the weekly time. I would sincerely urge folks who are not convinced to please visit 
the current Sikh Gurdwara on West Avenue firsthand and look at what the place looks like during weekdays and during hours. We please request you to visit and get your misconceptions clarified. Our daily and community prayers and meditation sessions are routinely conducted and held within the prayer halls. We do not have any call to prayer. I'm sure that the members of our community would be very happy to provide the specifics about the number of cars, occupancy of a Sikh temple at a particular time if it's needed. Service, sharing, and worship are the basic tenets of Sikhism. And if you read about it on internet, you will realize how much community means to us. The Sikh Gurdwara on Richards Avenue to plans to be a model citizen of Norwalk and abide by the rules. Please feel free to reach out to us or any other members of the congregation with your questions and doubts, and we would be very happy to provide honest, sincere answers. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to speak on behalf of the congregation. And we hope that you vote in our favor. We wish you a very happy and joyous festival season ahead. Thank you. Okay, um, next, uh, Kate Sanderson. Over. Thank you, Brian. I wondered if I could also share my screen. Sure, let me get you set up there. Can you see my screen? Uh, oh. No, yeah, you go to the bottom and you should be able to yeah, share your okay. screen. There you go. Okay, great. Um, first of all, I wanna thank the, um, the commissioners um, for listening to us. We had over 500 people sign our petition. Um, obviously the neighborhood is, is um, very concerned about a lot of issues, um, which we hope we can resolve some of them over time with the applicants. Um, we do oppose the project. Um, for several reasons. I do want to set the record straight on a couple of things. The, the application for this special permit depicts our AAA residential zone as more commercial than it is. There's a couple of um, things that are incorrect. Public transportation is 0.9 miles away, not 0.5 miles away as stated. The retail locations on Connecticut Avenue are 1.3 miles away and not within walking distance, even though I agree with the person who just spoke, we all love Costco, we don't walk there to buy a TV. So it's far away um, from, from all perspectives. Um, the vacant land at 283 Richards Ave was not on the market um, for several years as attorney Suchi said um, a couple of times now, it was on the market for two months before going into contract. And other people are gonna tell you some stories about um, what happened before it went into contract. Um, so it was not on the market for a few years, as verbally stated. It was listed with the Higgins Group on July 14th, went into contract with conditions on October 20th and closed shortly after. Also wanted to point out that the engineered site plans for the project are out of scale for the northerly and southerly side views. So when, um, when the applicant has a chance, it would be good to correct it. The scale says 3 16th instead of 1 8th of an inch in scale on pages A5 and A6. So please correct this so the public and the commission are looking at the properly scaled set of plans. Uh, the current location of GTBJ, uh, the applicant currently owns their building at 622 West Avenue, which by all accounts has successfully grown over the years and is already a reverent place in which to pra practice Sikhism. GTB has grown, GTBJ has grown over the years, starting at fewer than 95 people in 1997 when they applied for a zoning permit to fit up the People's Bank and growing to 250 plus families by 210, 2010, according to a news article and interview with a religious school instructor and a very well respected member of GTBJ. The site has ample on site, off site, and on street parking, plus access to public transportation as, in, as it is in the CBD district of Norwalk. G 
GTBJ can easily upgrade their current facility, including adding stories above to accommodate more congregants, residences for the staffers that live on site and have a roof garden for outdoor space if they wish. In the special permit application submitted for 283 Richards Ave, the congregation has declined from the high of perhaps 250 as suggested in the article and video that we've sent to planning and zoning, presumably due to COVID. However, 200 still exceeds the current permit of 95 in the active worship area. The applicant also certified to the health department on October 26 that four adults reside at 622 West Avenue, which is also to the best of our knowledge, unpermitted. Why is the commission even considering a special permit application if indeed the applicant is not respecting the zoning permit at their current location? What assurances do the neighbors have of, 200, that of 200, 283 Richards Ave that the applicant will not exceed the maximum, maximum capacities if this new permit is approved? This is not a low density project. GTBJ is applying for a new special permit to build a very high density 18,000 square foot mixed use center, including 70% impervious asphalt on a AAA residential one acre lot. Even if the setbacks are met, no one has said that this is not high density and it is within the commission's power to consider the impact of this project on the low density residential zone. This will be the largest commercial structure on the smallest possible one acre lot in the lowest density zone in Norwalk. This project includes removing the only buffer between Richard's Ave and the quiet street of Bet Marlia Drive, forever changing the neighborhood. This is not in keeping with the other houses of worship in the AAA residential zone. The applicant states that their project will have the same impact on our neighborhood as the three existing houses of worship. When considering the Florida area ratio, which I know attorney Suchi said we should not consider, but I still hope the commission does, this project will have a 0.41% far compared to the United Congregational Church, which is 0.05, Temple Shalom, which is 0.08, and St. Matthew Church, which currently is 0.05, but with their new addition, we expect to be at 0.10. There will be no mature trees to buffer the property and only a small patch of green space in the front, which is not comparable to the other houses of worship that, that reside on 2.62 acres, five acres and 21 acres of land respectively. The other houses of worship realize the strain that this application is putting on the neighborhood and have not offered support for the project nor have they offered overflow parking. I think it's interesting that attorney Suchi brought up Temple Shalom because they actually don't have enough parking. They do have a 17,000 square foot building and they did delineate a certain amount of, um, of area for their worship hall. And I do believe they have more than 35 spots. I think they have 52. At any rate, they even wrote themselves that they don't have enough adequate parking and they could not supply any overflow parking to any nearby houses of worship. However, they do have five acres, two of them which are completely undeveloped. So at any time they would like to create more parking, they can. And unfortunately, <clears> this <throat> will not have that opportunity. Calculating seats without fixed seating. It is my understanding that the current applicant does not have fixed seating. They applied without fixed seating. I don't know why they're having fixed seating now, but I don't really care if they have fixed seating or not. I just wanted to point out the calculations. Regulation 118-12201 says the seating capacity of a house of worship without fixed seating shall be computed at one person for each seven square feet intended for patron occupancy. Only when the maximum seating capacity calculation is used can the house of worship then apply the parking calculation of one car for each five patrons. PNZ's initial staff response that was that the 4,725 square foot worship hall holds a maximum of 675 patrons requiring 135 spaces. The applicant responded by identifying only a 3,600 square foot area intended for patron occupancy, yet it says this is only 240 patrons. The commission is required to apply regulation 118-12201 as it is written, 3,600 square feet divided by seven square feet is 514 people at maximum. And this therefore requires 103 parking spaces. The applicant only has half of the parking that it needs. Calculating seats and parking continued. The other two houses of worship without fixed seating in the city of Norwalk, for which we have diagrams found in the city hall planning and zoning office are both located in the CBD zone and both of them applied 118-12201 correctly to the worship hall when, when determining the maximum seating capacity. I was very happy to hear 
from the man from um, Al Madani Islamic Center because when they fit up a previously um, Episcopalian church, I believe at One Union Park, they correctly took two worship areas, 1,843 square feet divided by seven square feet per person to come up with 264 people. When divided by five, five at maximum, they need 52 parking spaces and they provided 64. The other applicant with unfixed seating currently is the current applicant. GTBJ. They reside at 622 West Avenue. In this diagram, which we obtained from City Hall, they clearly state that they have a 665 square foot of active worship hall area. They took the entire space, including the choir area and the holy book area, and they divided that by seven, creating 95 people, then at maximum divided by five, which requires them to have 19 parking spaces, and they provided 24. They even clearly did the math right on the top of this thing because they understand how this regulation should and was applied in the past. Calculating seats and parking for fixed seating. Well, I wasn't sure this was gonna come up tonight, but now that the applicant is saying that they have fixed seating, uh, the applicant responded to TMP's most recent letter regarding peer reviewed traffic study, stating that they may or may not have fixed seating. I hope the commission will require them to decide before and then hold them to that when they go for the C of O, because I don't believe that they will have fixed seating, but maybe they will. So fine, let's go with fixed seating. St. Matthew Roman Catholic Church in the AAA zone of West Norwalk expanded in 2003 and maximized the worship hall to accommodate as many patrons as possible, also providing plenty of extra parking should members not commute at the city's regulation of five people per car, and or as they also said, in case they grow, which they are growing at a rate of 5% per year. At 3,600 square feet, the applicant should be able to fit 30 fixed pews and bleachers or 400 people, which would still require 80 parking spaces. Here is the diagram of 216 Scribner Ave in the AAA zone of West Norwalk, about half a mile from my house. And this is St. Matthew's um, worship hall. It's 7,433 square feet, including the sanctuary and the aisleways. It has 63, 63 fixed seating pews and is about twice the size of the worship hall area at 283 Richards Ave as it has been designed. Uh, 960 people at maximum, then divided by five people per car, 192 parking spaces required, 248 provided. Growth expectations. Looking at the 1997 zoning permit and the 2021 special permit application, the congregation size has grown from 95 people to 200 at a rate of 3.2% per year. A news article from 2010 claims that the congregation size had already reached 250, which is a much faster growth rate of 8% per year. The article and accompanying video supplied was supplied to PNZ. I'm not gonna play this video in the essence of time, but I will send it to anyone that would like to see it. It shows people worshiping without fixed seating and it's a very busy occasion, which is wonderful. Uh, the applicant has failed to plan for any growth beyond the size of the building. What if they grow and they are wrong? They should be hopeful that they grow. And I don't know why they're not planning for that, especially as the president said, money is not a problem. I really hope that they can find a place that they can grow. Um, this will be the largest Gregorda in the state of Connecticut and Westchester County from which the applicant currently draws. Why are they not planning for significant growth? Here are some other surrounding gurdwaras. There are two small gurdwaras in Connecticut, in Hamden and in Windsor, and one very small gurdwara in Westchester. Here is the most comparable gurdwara in Southington. It is 17,400 square feet with over three buildings, a worship hall, a school, and a separate residence. By the way, it has grown three times since it opened, and it is on three acres with over 112 parking spaces, even though the worship hall is under 4,000 square feet. This is the initial rendering that the applicant gave and the commission had asked uh, for an impact study or at least a rendering on what this would look like in the neighborhood. So I wanted to show the neighborhood for a second, if you would bear with me. I'm almost done commissioner. I know I'm taking a long time. I've really done a lot of homework on this. Um, so here is West Norwalk, here's our neighborhood. And um, here is, I mean, there's a golf course, everybody knows Oak Hills and there's the school and there's United Congregational Church. But this little tiny acre that we're talking about right here is where 
where we're talking about this gigantic 18,000 square foot building going that will be completely paved over. All of these trees in the front have already been removed. All of these trees in the back, most of them I should say will be removed because they are on their property. It goes very back, deep, deeply back. And obviously we're very upset that this tree canopy will be taken away. Hopefully I can get back to my presentation. Okay, sorry. Okay, this is the rendering um, that was given um, by the commission, which was requested. We were pretty insulted. I, I'm sorry to use that word, but we found this to be not, not appropriate at all. The house on the left is not where it is. It's angled. It's probably because they used a, a, a panoramic camera that was, you know, they didn't invest in a really big, a big study or anything to really show what it's gonna look like in the neighborhood. So we, the neighbors put together our own study and came up with this rendering, which I really hope plays. Oh wait, I have to go to presenter mode. So this is a rendering of what it will look like in a 3D model. This is showing the maximum cars that have been provided, um, 53, including three handicapped spots. The house on the left is 279 Richards Ave, uh, Randall and Kathy Weeks, that's their little garage in the back. And then since the property slopes at a 9% grade, which by the way, the maximum is 10%, um, this is our house on the right with our garage. And this is what it's going to look like. The people standing there are six feet tall. And this is what I would have hoped that the applicant would have shown to the commission to show an impact study. And I do hope that the commission will continue to develop this. I'm happy to turn over the native files and, um, and really develop it out to show the neighborhood. We're really, very, very concerned about that Marlia and um, what this project will do to that, to that area. So, High density equals lower property values. This is an extremely high density building with 70% asphalt and commercial directional signage, which will greatly impact our single biggest assets, our homes. The Stanford Greenwich Appraisers estimates a loss between 10 to 15% of our home value. Realtors are more pessimistic at a decline of 20 to 30%. Most of the abutting neighbors are over 60 years old and we cannot possibly make up for this financial hit in our lifetime. We really beg the commission and the city to please help compromise. Please consider the big this big impact on West Norwalk and greatly reduce the size of this project which, which is within the commission's authority. Please bring it down to the far ratio that is in keeping with the other houses of worship who are good neighbors to us. Help the applicant to expand and improve their current location or work with them to find a space with more land for abundant parking, green spaces, a playground for children, catering facilities, and a residence for their staff and room to grow. This would be a much better investment for GTBJ congregation than a highly compromised project with no room to grow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Sherry Brown. Yes, can you hear me? Yep. You wanna bring me on camera too, please? Sure, give me one second. You should be good to sh uh, show your camera. Am I still on mute? Oh my gosh. Good. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to speak before you tonight. My name is Sherry McCready Brown, and I reside on Riverview Drive. I'm a real estate agent and a lifelong resident of Norwalk, and I attend Bethel AME Church. My relationship with the Sikh community is through Connect which stands for Congregations Organizing for a New Connecticut. And Bethel is a member of Connect. And through this organization, I have gotten to know Rena, who is a member of the Gudwara. 
I would like to take this moment of reflection to share my support for the sick community and my support for the right of the sick community to build a new Gurdwara of their choice while adhering to the zoning regulations of the city of Norwalk and the state of Connecticut. As a lifelong member of this community, it has been my personal experience that love of family and community are the groundwork for religion. Norwalk citizens are a microcosm of extended kinship of a multi-textured city blessed with diversity, charm, and character. The six are a friendly, peace-loving, hardworking, law-abiding citizens of this nation and of our community. They are a vibrant part of this community, and Norwalk is home to many of them who have lived, worked, and raised their families here for decades. Like other faiths, service to others is one of their core values and you will find them in the community extending help to others in need, whether it's organizing food drives for person to person, volunteering at the open door shelter, or, how, or hosting interfaith prayer services. They play a very active role in this community and they contribute to the city of Norwalk. So on behalf of Bethel Church and Connect, I strongly urge you to move this application forward. And I have to say that although that last presentation, she clearly put a lot of thought into it, it was a little disheartening to hear some of the comments because while it seemed to have a lot of work, it was a little condescending. And I just hope that all of you will be very thoughtful as you move forward in addressing and reviewing this application. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have Stephanie Kennedy. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Um, I just want to say I agree with everything Carla said, and I um, definitely disagree with the condescendingness um, that was just noted. Um, I think we just all care about our community, and I think it's very important that everyone has a place to worship. Um, the one thing that I would just like to note is I think it's really important um, in a question, we looked at the parking and the traffic, but have we looked at the traffic, you know, pre-COVID? I think things have changed quite a bit. I know that um, I haven't attended my church regularly um, before COVID, so I just want to make sure that we're looking at the traffic patterns um, that are going to hopefully return soon. And then my second thing that I want to say is I would like to know what additional stress on our tax burden um, we will have by maintaining these roads. And by the way, I am at 24 Weed Avenue. My husband and I have been residents for over 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have Frank. Hello. We can hear you. Oh, great. I just have a few comments. I'm uh, offended at the suggestion. Pardon me, Frank. Yes, sir. Can we have your full name and your address, please? I'm sorry, Frank Benetti, 11 Hunters Lane. I've lived here about 32 years. That's sufficient? That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm offended at the suggestion of religious prejudice and concerned at the warning to be careful if we're in opposition to this project. Uh, I'm opposed to any house of worship, including Jewish synagogue or Catholic church uh, that's new to this area because of the volume of traffic and how it affects an already very, very busy community. In my opinion, residential should be just that and, and nothing more. And I would expect that in the absence of explicit zoning changes or wording, that there will be future applications like this. And unfortunately, lawsuits and monetary settlements. And I think this could probably all be avoided if not in this instance. That's all I had to say and thank you. Thank you. 
Next, we have uh, Catherine Gettigan. Great, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Great, hi, I'm Kathy McGettigan. I live at 20 Bet Marley Road and I've lived here for 29 years. Uh, I would like, to, I will keep to three minutes though, um, I, but I'd like to start by saying thank you to the commission for providing opportunities to hear all sides in this matter. And I'd like to touch upon three quick issues in opposition to the proposed project. Uh, first, Norwalk is a wonderful town in which to live and we are lucky to have a number of places of worship in the area. Uh, the three closest have buildings that encompass just a fraction of their land space, as we've discussed. Uh, in fact, many years ago, the UCC was situated on even more land before, par before parts of that land were sold. Um, I know the FAR ratio might not be a requirement, but it is important in this area. So the size of the proposed development is of great concern. Um, for an 18,000 square foot structure and parking on only 1.01 acre of land, um, it's, it's humongous. Just like the nearby places of worship, the homeowners in the area have had to adhere to certain requirements in this AAA zone whenever building or making changes to their homes. We have not been allowed to squish in structures that are not in keeping with this neighborhood. Squishing in a structure of such magnitude on one acre of land is also not in keeping with other residences or the public buildings in this area. Second, parking and traffic flow are also great concerns. Uh, uh, Bet Marley Road was uh, completely covered on election day, um, although it didn't last for very long, um, but I'll focus more on the traffic. It's already intense with travelers using the West Norwalk area as a cut through to avoid uh, the 95 and the Merritt and Connecticut Avenue. In addition, that three-way stop near Fox Run School often becomes an angry location when some people don't abide by the rules. So given the amount of people attending the services and the proximity to that intersection is definitely a safety issue. And finally, the environmental impact is also of great concern, mainly because of the destruction that has to occur because of the space needed for the proposed structure size. It will take years for new plantings to grow to an acceptable height that would provide a decent amount of privacy to neighbors. So in closing, there's no doubt that there's a lot of great community work and uh, that's coming from the applicants, but why such an enormous structure and why on such a tiny piece of land? The proposal for 283 Richards Avenue would be perfect on a bigger piece of property, but it's unreasonable for this location. So please, I urge you to consider a compromise or let this area remain low density. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have Ralph Lehman. Just unmuted. Maybe you can put me on camera as well. Sure, give me one second. All right, you should be able to uh, turn your camera on. It should be on, but it looks like it's not working. So I'm just gonna assume, let's see here. Yeah, it's not, oh, there it goes. Ah. There you go. Thank you, sorry. Um, my name's Ralph Lehman. I am a resident of uh, Riverside, Connecticut. I am not one of your Norwalk uh, residents, but I am one of your neighbors and frequent Norwalk. Um, I'm a 30 year resident of the Stamford uh, Greenwich area. Uh, I was uh, 25 years at, at GE as an EVP in their investment uh, business. Spent two and a half years with State Street Global Advisors as their vice chairman. Last two and a half years, I've been uh, the CEO and chairman of a FinTech company here in the Northeast uh, as a startup. Uh, for 20 years, I've been a, a member of the congregation or the Sangit of the Norwalk Temple, uh, the Gurdwara. Uh, as a single white man, uh, I was welcomed 
with open arms by the Sangit as I learned the cultural aspects of the Sikh religion to match the philosophical and spiritual interests that I, I learned over time. Uh, take a step back, a cliff note version of my story. A young man kind of stopped believing, grows distance from the religion that he grew up with. Uh, international traveler and investor learns new markets and cultures and philosophies and the Sikh faith uh, resonated with me. Uh, it's it. one God, everyone is equal in the eyes of God. Uh, Sikh will defend the right of others to hold their own beliefs. The Sikh uh, continually seeks knowledge to uh, find enlightenment and the truth. Those all resonated with me in a major way. So go forward a little bit more at the story. 18 years ago, I married and my wife moved down from Boston and attended the Norwalk Gudora. Uh, with me. I, a few years later, we had a daughter. We brought her to the uh, Sunday religious classes uh, on West Street. Quite frankly, they're inadequate. A very small building. It, it really wasn't a pleasant experience. It's not uh, built for a Gudora, it's built for a bank. And it uh, has been a faith has gotten us through. We've been looking at places for a very long time to, to expand to. And it's something that I wish my daughter would have had the benefit of, to be frank. She's now uh, been through her experience and I would like uh, and fully support the opportunity for the next generation of children that skipped my daughter to have that better opportunity with a new facility. And I fully support that. Real quickly, um, some of the concerns that I've heard, uh, not, not earlier, in the presentation today, but before, was the high traffic area throughout the week. Um, I can say from my own experience, this is definitely not the case. Uh, I am one of those that will attend for 20 minutes to 30 minutes and then leave. But in the most recent times, my daughter, uh, with who's now a teenager, is into weekend sports schedules. As you mean, you may know, we end up going travel team, doing things, and miss often the Sunday uh, services. I also, uh, since COVID, uh, my wife has had other health challenges, non-COVID related, that's caused us to be more cautious about being with groups. And with the small facility that we're in, we've tended to avoid uh, the service and we go on off hours. So we frequent uh, the uh, Godora about twice a month. Uh, we'll go on a Saturday morning early or sometime during midweek in the late afternoons. And when we go, there is Virtually no one else there except maybe the priest. Uh, occasionally there's a, a few people, but it's, it's very limited. Uh, so that there should be no worries about the off hour uh, attendance uh, to this facility. It's quite quiet. Um, in conclusion, I really wanna share what I've, I've heard uh, tonight already, but you know, I wanna pile on it. The core value of Sikhi, uh, Sikh faith, is seva, or service, and it's service to humanity. Um, you've heard some good stories of it. Uh, my wife and I have been active in the Fairfield uh, community, Fairfield County community, and charity boards. I've, I'm involved on the advisory board of Build On, which is a service charity for high school students in uh, inner city schools, including places like Bridgeport and, and uh, in inner city, New York City. Um, my wife has been involved with the uh, board and the investment committee, the YWC of Greenwich, been very active there in women's causes. The service mindset of the Gudora and the congregation that we belong to is very much geared as you heard towards the local uh, charities and events. We have been involved with the cancer walks and other uh, fundraising events for local charities. This is a big part of our community. I just wanna make sure that you understand, given all the concerns that the Sikh uh, community and the Gurdwara will be very good neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. Uh, Gregory Dorsey. Great, and feel free to put my camera. Sure. Uh, 
All right, you should be able to turn your camera on now. All right, I am having trouble with that, so I won't delay things. I'll just uh, get into it. Uh, my name is Greg Dorsey. I, I live at the uh, Six Weed Avenue, just around the corner from where the proposed temple is uh, would be located. And uh, I'm here in support of this development. Uh, I submitted uh, comments earlier to the commission and uh, some of what I stated in those, those uh, uh, have already been said. So I'll, I'll bridge what I'm gonna, uh, what I have to say. Uh, uh, opponents have expressed uh, concerns about illegal street parking when services are held. I, I believe those concerns are unfounded. Street parking restrictions are easily enforced. Ticket or tow away a few cars and it'll quickly stop if it occurs at all. Overflow parking is easily accommodated with the school parking lot just steps away. Every city, town in Connecticut has a district where multiple houses of worship are concentrated. Shame on those who want to stop this one from joining the others in this area. If this was a Presbyterian or a Lutheran church, I doubt there'd be uh, the same hue and cry that we're hearing today. I can't help but think that the density, quote unquote, argument we keep hearing about uh, it used by the opponents of the temple has at least a tinge of racial or religious fear driving it. Concerns about brown skin people, turban wearing people, perhaps even terrorists moving into the neighborhood. And I say this because two area residents that I spoke with ignorantly expressed dismay that a mosque was going up. The unspoken implication, in other words, that Al Qaeda would soon be moving it, setting up shop next door here in uh, West Norwalk. The simple truth is. Behind this project are good people of faith who just want to worship. They should be allowed that freedom. Once the temple is established, I think the neighbors will discover a friendly, warm, and generous group that adds to the rich richness of our community. And that the intersection of Richards and Philo is not subject to gridlock, as some have imagined. I welcome the temple and its congregants, and I urge every Norwalk resident to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Harry Aurora. Yeah, can you can you can you get me on screen? Sure. Okay, you should be able to use your camera now, Harry. Okay, can you see me and hear me? Yes. Good evening. Chair Shulman, members of the Zoning Committee, my friends, neighbors. Uh, I am State Representative Harry Aurora and a resident of the Grand Stanford area for the last 20 years. I represent the 151st District in the Connecticut General Assembly. I'm on the Labor, Energy, and Human Services Committee and have served the people of Connecticut for many years. I've also been a member of this congregation for the last 20 years. My kids were introduced to faith and morality in this Gurdwara and the prayers for the last rites of my father were done in this congregation. I speak today to allay the concerns of fellow citizens and ask the zoning board and all of you to favorably approve this project. Sikh religion is based on the teachings of faith in one God, in the virtue of honest work, and in the love for humanity. Sikhism is the fifth largest religion in the world. Most of the 25 million followers of Sikhism reside in India. In the United States, there are about half a million six. We have roots in Punjab, but we are as American as any other community. Six in our community work in different professions, and we are woven into the fabric of American society. Let me also try to allay some concerns that I've heard. In the last 20 years, I've been a member of the congregation. The only gatherings of any real size are on Sundays. Even when a festival or a holy day is on a weekday, we follow the American tradition of celebrating it on a Sunday, the following Sunday. The services tend to be short and quiet between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. A couple of times a year when, when something in my personal or professional life is really bothering me, I'll come during a weekday and there's no one there but just the priest. It is quiet. I sit down, meditate for a little bit, and leave with my heart in peace. A majority of her congregation does live in Norwalk, 
and many others live in neighboring towns. I'm proud to say that Sikhism teaches us to serve our community and our neighbors. The Sikhs were a big force in the fight for liberty in the First and the Second World War. You may have seen the movie English Patient. 120,000 Sikhs made the ultimate sacrifice in the two world wars alongside the allied forces. In the last few decades, the Gurdwara has been in Norwalk. I think it's 25 years. We've always strived to be part of the community, serve the community and enrich the community. We hope to invite all of you to participate in our traditions. We hope to be there in every way for our neighbors, to celebrate together, to solve challenges together and to be together. I know buildings are messy affairs. If your neighbor builds their house, it can be very annoying. But I can assure you that if there are re reasonable concerns with the build, our Gurdwara, our community will work with the, com will every, with the neighbors to address those issues. We have been and will continue to be part of Norwalk. We care for Norwalk. We care for all of you. As I said, Sikhism is about faith in one God, about honest work, and about sharing with our community. I ask all of you to support our worship. I ask the board to approve the project. Thank you for your time. May God bless everyone in this room and in this beautiful town. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. <clears throat> Jack Juan, you just have to uh, un unmute yourself. Um, should be at the bottom of your screen. Yep, I got it. Perfect. You go. Can you bring me up as well? Sure. Right. Thank you. Okay, you should be able to turn your camera on. Yep, perfect. Can you guys see me and hear me? You can hear you. I can't see you, though. Oh. Okay. Uh, there we go. There you go. Perfect. Thank you so much. So good evening, uh, Chairman Shulman, uh, Commissioners, and Norwalk residents. My name is Jagjeevan Singh, and I currently work at First County Bank. I am the business banking officer. I cover the Fairfield County area. I am resident of 11 more places in Norwalk, Connecticut, and I am a member of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji Foundation. Uh, we are requesting special permit approval uh, as currently we're utilizing our prayer hall as a dining hall and our classrooms are not up to date. Uh, Sikh Temple is very well known in the community as we work very closely with other nonprofits, such as Person to Person, uh, Carver Foundation, and various others, uh, as mentioned previously. Uh, and even during the pandemic, we appreciated our medical workers from Norwalk Hospital by catering food. We are deeply involved in the Norwalk community, and this is where we want to grow. Uh, giving back is one of our fundamentals. We have been giving back to the community. And um, I am requesting on behalf of our temple that you approve this special permit as we are meeting all requirements of the zoning. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Imrit Singh. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, uh, it would be great if you can uh, allow me to share my camera. Sure. Okay, you should be able to now. Am I visible to everyone? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. Um, respected chairman and commissioners. Um, Zoning Commission officials and all the members of Novak Town community and everyone else attending this public hearing, I'm humbled to come here to speak regarding this project. Um, my name is Imreet Singh. I am a member and humble servant of Guru Tegh Bahadurji Foundation, Norwalk, from the last seven years. 
by profession, I'm a computer engineer and I've been working on Wall Street for the last 10 years. My wife is a dentist. I have two young kids, son four and daughter two. Mr. My Singh, son, I, I apologize for interrupting. Um, uh, can you uh, state your address, please? Yes, I was going to say that in the next line. I'm a resident. I, I have been a resident of Norwalk um, from 2016 to 2018, and currently I'm resident of Southport, Fairfield, Fairfield County. Thank you. My address is 153 Peace Avenue, Southport. My son is a student and I'm a teacher in the Sunday Community School. A little bit about Sikh community and the core principles before I go to and um, say why we want new Gurdwara in the current location we're talking about. Founded by Guru Nanak in 15th century in the Indian subcontinent in the Northeast state of Punjab, Sikhs first came to America to, in the late 1800s and there are estimated half a million Americans and um, Sikhs in America today. Sikhi teaches a message of love and oneness. Community service and justice for all are the core aspects of the Sikh way of life. Today, Sikh, Sikhs live all over the United States and are embedded within their local and national communities and remain committed to the core values of spiritual growth and social justice. Sikhs continue to establish Gurdwaras as per local community needs and they have established themselves as active contributors of the Sikh society as they come from all types of professions, bankers, ID, politicians, doctors, teachers, nurses, lawyers, as you have witnessed today. Now, why new Gurdwara, right? New Gurdwara building at 23 Richards will be an upgrade over the existing facilities, which we have been desiring for years now. It will be fundamental and essential for having comfortable and safe environment for our congregation and performing community services for years to come. Congregants will have better prayer hall, kids will have better classrooms and library, and most needed a separate dining area. The location is only a few miles from existing building and is the ideal location for performing religious services for all the existing members. Everyone has right to prosper, grow, and seek opportunities for their next generation. This is the future for our next generation. Our dream of having desirable and comfortable facility staying within the great town of Norwalk is here now. This dream holds very special place in all of our hearts, young adults and seniors. Now concerns that have been raised until now, we have been hearing big construction or a small construction. There will be impact to the neighborhood while the construction is happening. So there's no doubt about it. When the construction is gonna happen, there will be impacts to the street closure here and there, and that will be uh, for anybody. In terms of environmental effects, Sikhs are the most pro-environmental communities. For people who do not know, Eco-Sikh is a community um, um, within the America and have been planting trees and they have a goal of 1 million trees to grow across the uh, world in the honor of first Guru Nanak. Eco-Sikh is responsible, um, is the response from the Sikh community to the threats of climate change and the deterioration of the natural environment. Balihari Kudrat Vasya means the creator resides in the creation, which is environment. Our proposed building has been carefully designed by architects, civil and traffic engineers to comply with the various rules and regulations applicable to our place of worship. And once constructed, will be a wonderful addition to the existing religious organizations in the neighborhood. I thank the team behind this for all the hard work as the member of community who have been the fabric of the great part of the fabric of the great town of Norwalk from last 25 plus years. I sincerely hope that respected zoning commission official present in this meeting and all the members of 283 Richard neighborhood will be in the favor of this project. I hope and humbly request you to approve the application for special permit. Wishing you all happy holidays and great time with your family and friends. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have, uh... Peter Frederick-Angelo. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. All right, my name is Peter Frederick-Angelo. Um, I live at 14 Fireside Fort in Norwalk, Connecticut. My wife and I have been living in Norwalk for the past 50 years. 
I have a business on East Avenue in Norwalk for the last 37 years, where I own a couple of buildings, and I've owned many other buildings in Norwalk. As such, we're very familiar with the permits required and what is needed to get a special permit. For example, maybe a parcel of land doesn't have the required width, or it's too high to meet the building code, with similar minor differences. It's not easy to get approved for a special permit. And although you may really want the permit, it's also important to make sure you fit into the surrounding area to maintain and not stress the neighborhood because that will become your neighborhood. But this applicant needs special permits for such major variances that its approval will make a mockery of the entire process of consideration of special permits. Many of them have been addressed so far, but if we look at the basic goal that your group has to address is that it does not conform to the neighborhood at all. It super exceeds the density and every aspect of this plan goes against and destroys the entire strength and value of having the Norwalk Building Code, which is designed specially when you consider special permits to protect the general health, safety, welfare, and property values of the neighborhood. Yes, you can have many religious facilities on Richards Avenue. You can take every lot and build one. That is not the point of saying, well, because you fit in that parcel of land, that means your job is to just grant approval. The goal is we're in triple A zoning. We already are overloaded with such huge facilities that have overgrown their intention originally. We originally had McGrath Elementary School on Richards Avenue. They closed that and because they said it was not needed. Then they moved the children from McGrath to Fox Run and put the, uh, the uh, community college there. Then they doubled the size of the community college. But yet, what conditions do we have to stop that? No, nope, it's been granted approval, you go ahead and build. That's exactly what is happening here. It's not because it's a religious facility. We have not objected to religious facilities here. But what it really means is destroying our neighborhood. And that is what we're against. What is the pressure that they have to push to get this facility made? They already own a religious facility that they can adapt or they can find property where they don't have to inflict such negative impact in the neighborhood. You want to have a positive impact on your neighborhood that will be your neighborhood for many years to come. For that reason, we object to this acceptance. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Joe Lac Lacavera. Yes, I can hear, can you hear me? Yes, yep. we can. Okay, um, I don't need to go on camera. Um, I oppose this project. Uh, I live on a fireside court, which is, um, I guess, around the block from where, where, where or down the street and around the block uh, from where the 283 Richards Avenue is. Um, I, I guess I, I, I'm begging the uh, planning uh, 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 the, the zoning department here, don't destroy our neighborhood by adding this enormous structure. It has nothing to do with re religious beliefs uh, or, or, or anything else. It's just that it's this enormous structure going on this small piece of property sandwiched in between two resident, uh, regular resident homes. Uh, don't forget that what was there before was a single family home and you're trying to put an 18,000 square foot building on it and then a 70 percent of blacktop around it um and i agree with the uh, the first pictures that put up uh because i walk by that piece of property every day 
uh, if I go out for a walk or something, uh, the first pictures uh, uh, were definitely out of proportion uh, from what you're going to see. Um, so I guess I implore you, don't overbuild, uh, don't hurt our property values here. Um, and uh, uh, in, in addition to that, I guess, uh, uh, you need to take into account that uh, that intersection there is extremely dangerous, uh, Richards Avenue and by the, um, uh, by the Fox Run School. When you're turning onto Richards Avenue, um, it's sort of a, um, I don't know how they did it. It's not a straight attempt at a left-hand turn. And then there's a, um, a, uh, a telephone pole right there where the entrance of the, uh, uh, the uh, where the entrance to the driveway will be for the new, um, for the new structure. Um, so I don't know if, um, if the people who did the study had actually driven through that, through the, through those intersections right there. But I can tell you uh, from living on one side of Norwalk and then from living on this side, when you're coming from, um, from one, from the other side of Norwalk, turning on to Richards Avenue, um, that intersection, there's, it's probably only a hundred feet to where the new driveway will be uh, going in there. And with uh, the amount of traffic I that will go in, in and out of there, I think you're going to have a potential, you're going to have a lot of potential problems. And then in addition to that, uh, you mentioned the parking. Um, and I, because I, I live, I've lived here for 10 years on certain occasions, some of the other, uh, some of the other uh, uh, churches uh, do park in the street on Riches Avenue. And there's a police, you know, the police are out there monitoring that. Um, and if they do that at that corner, you're going to have, you're going to have extreme problems. Uh, because it's a very narrow, uh, it's a very narrow um, part of the uh, part of the road there, and when people turning on uh, on the left hand uh, side, it's just an accident waiting to happen. And then obviously you also have kid, children walking back and forth to the school. Not all the time, but but it does happen. Uh, so it, my big concern is that it's just too big of a structure to put on such a small piece of property. Why does that have to be done? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Sandeep Kaur. Let me bring you over. Hello? We can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Shulman and the members of the commission. Uh, my name is Sandeep Kaur and I am a Norwalk resident in the Brookside area. Did you want me to state my address? Yes, please. 15 Oak Ledge Circle in Norwalk. My family and I have been a part of the Norwalk community for the, for the past 23 years and I am an active member of the GTBF as well. Two of my three kids have gone through the Norwalk school system and graduated. My youngest now is a sophomore at Brian McMahon High School. Going to a school for academics is not the only thing that molds kids' minds. They need to be connected to not only their school community, but also to their heritage. So I'm thankful that all my kids had the opportunity to actively participate in all the religious community gatherings at GTBJF as well. They were able to learn the language Punjabi and the Sikh history by attending Sunday school at GGSA, which is a part of GTBJF. I've taught at my Sunday school for over 10 years and have been an active member of this community, partaking in all the school bag and toy drives, soup kitchens, sandwich drives in the Norwalk area. I've also served the Norwalk public school system in the capacity of a substitute teacher in various elementary schools and our neighborhood middle school, Roten Middle School. So I know how important it is to, for the kids to feel that they belong. My kids and all the other sick er kids in the area call Norwalk their home. Being a minority in the country, 
having this place of worship in their home time, hometown has been a very fortunate thing for my family and me, and I'm sure for the other Sikh families as well. The proposed new building will allow us to have many classrooms in the education floor where students at different levels can learn in separate classrooms. We'll have a place for the community to share a meal and proper dining room. Our next generation needs this so they can be proud of what their parents and elders leave behind for them to cherish to, for years to come. The new building will give us more room to conduct services and a separate place to socialize in the same building. The new place will have many more convenient facilities like bathrooms located in various areas and an elevator for those who can't climb stairs. A lot of our community members have put in many, many hours planning and designing. We're working with the best professionals like architects and engineers and are following city codes and protocols to bring about this beautiful addition in Norwalk. We hope that we are allowed to go ahead with our plans so that we can provide better worshiping and gathering opportunities for young and old, just like the members of other religious denominations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Lane Evans. Sorry. Sorry, can you hear us okay? Yes, we can. Okay, this is Dean and Lane Evans at 8 Fox Run Road. Um, not gonna weigh in on some of the things we've been talking about now, but I wanna go back to the beginning. I think something that Richard was asking about in terms of the calculation of the fixed seats in the plan. Um, I, is that something that's used to calculate parking, but doesn't necessarily have to be in the final building or are the fixed seats going to be in the building? In other words, on the second floor, the major area is gonna be fixed or not? Because it seems to me that that goes to some of the legal arguments that we heard from the lawyer about how we calculate parking for this place. But if it's those seats aren't fixed, does, it, does the calculation still work? I think it probably does. But do we have to ha do, does the facility have to have fixed seats or not? Is it intending to have fixed seats or not? Yeah. So that's just a question goes back to the beginning, but I'd like to, I never thought we really clarified that. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next we have uh, Ross Tiefenthaler. Can you hear me? Can we hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, while the applicant, I'm Ross Tiefenthaler, 287 Richards Avenue, I'm the north abutting neighbor. Um, while the applicant has met the setback and coverage requirements for a single family house, they're not proposing to build a single family house. Most houses in the AAA zone are under 3,000 square feet on a same size lot of one acre. Uh, the requirement for the AAA zone, this is the most important thing, that one acre gives us privacy, green space, lawns, woodlands, and ponds. In short, a less urban environment than the rest of the city. Uh, it is this community that I sought to move to not once but twice and live and raise my children and renovate and preserve two antique homes. The AAA zone allows for houses of worship by special permit and residences as a matter of right. If a resident meets the various requirements, setbacks, coverage, lot size, it must be granted the permit as a matter of right. Not true of schools or houses of worship. These uses are rightfully held to a higher standard, a special permit. Section 118-450C states, and I'm quoting, in granting a special permit, the commission may attach reasonable conditions and safeguards as it deems necessary to protect the health, safety, welfare, and property values of the neighborhood. This includes, but is not limited to, screening off the, the uh, building from the neighbors, parking, the right to ask for redesign of the structure by the commission, and the rejection of the application. 
Furthermore, it goes on to state that projects must be in keeping with the low density nature of the neighborhood. No student of architecture or land use would ever call this project low density. This proposal for an 18,000 square foot building with a total coverage of building and pavement of 70% is in line with an urban design and building, is not in line with a low density use in a residential neighborhood. No parallel exists in the other houses of worship and this proposal. The sheer volume of underground structures required to meet the health and drainage codes is a marvel of engineering for this Never in my 40 years as general contractor have I ever seen this. Again, a low density use doesn't require this intense level of infrastructure. And by the way, out of the, all the trees on the property, we may save one from the chainsaw. Residents at the rear of the project will greet the morning sun with a shadow of a nine foot high retaining wall, not by a 41 foot facade and a 10 foot dome on top. The exposure will overshadow the quiet at Marlia neighborhood without abatement or screening. Please note that on pages A5 and A6 of the plans, the side elevations are not the same scale as they are on the front and gives a little bit of a misleading uh, view of what this, the overall uh, uh, size of the building is. Um, if you accept this, we got a new low bar for, for for density and what constitutes a medium density project or a high density project at this point. Um, other problems with this site, you have a lack of outdoor event space. There is nowhere to hold a picnic. There are no, no outdoor space that all the other churches have. Uh, you have no playground for children. You have a lack of space for future memorial gardens or trees, and you lack any room to expand or have overflow parking. Uh, the plans lack adequate parking, no provision is possible to accommodate future growth of the congregation. And this will be the best Guarda in the area. It's gonna be a wonderful facility, but it doesn't have the infrastructure around it to support. Um, my objection is not with the Sikh religion or the Sikh people, but rather with this project. Many architectural experts cite that a house of worship should be placed on four to five acres. This is not practical in Fairfield County, maybe in, in this area, but maybe a minimum of two and a half to three acres, such as the United Church of Christ has. Um, a two to three acre lot size would be in keeping with the other houses of worship in the zone. This allows for outdoor events, parking, playgrounds, and spaces, uh, give spaces for the other uh, houses around it. Secondly, this project harms the city of Norwalk by making a mockery of the zoning codes, lowering the bar right to the floor. Every application going forward will have to be passed. Finally, the project harms our close neighbors and our property values will suffer at the hands of this project. And lastly, the T community really receives poor return on their investment with a lack of parking, the inability to grow the congregation, the lack of remedial land for repairs or expansion should the infrastructure need that uh, to be repaired. And in short, there are really no winners here. I'd like us all to work together to find a better solution uh, for the Sikhs. I think they need a new facility. We would like them to grow and, and be part of this community that they already are a part of. And I think we all deserve it. Thank you. Okay, um, next uh, is Lahi. And you just have to unmute yourself. It should be at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. If not, uh, we'll come back to you. Um, next, uh, Elizabeth Courtright. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Courtright and I live at 12 Ridge Farms Road, which is across the street from Temple Shalom. I'm disappointed that the public comment portion of this meeting was preceded by Ms. Suchi attempting to squelch dissenting voices with her insinuation that Mr. Rowena was questioning, quote, this denomination, unquote, 
when he asked for seating clarification. I resent the similar implication and outright accusation stated by another commenter that neighbors who object to this project would welcome, for example, a Presbyterian church. In any case, I will risk such insinuations and, I'll, and accusations and I'll comment anyway. <clears throat> We've heard from members of the Norwalk community who declare their longstanding affection for Norwalk and their hope that this project should proceed. And yet I've noticed that they don't live in the area and therefore their daily life and property values would not be impacted. Has anyone who supports this project voiced any recognition of the concerns of neighbors who object to tree removal, property valuation impact, parking concerns, and traffic congestion? No. Have they disputed these concerns? No. When speakers speak about our community, I wonder what community they're referring to. I'd like to know if this project has received support from members of our Richards Avenue community in West Norwalk, who will be directly impacted by this enormous structure in our residential area. Currently, I have to rely on the kindness of southbound drivers during morning rush when I exit my street to head toward my job as a nurse. I wonder whether the traffic study was conducted during the high congestion hours of Richards Avenue when even a few additional cars will cause more congestion. Has anyone who is opposed to this project stated that this house of worship does not represent a vibrant and valuable religious community in Norwalk? No. We are opposed to the location of this exceedingly large structure in our community because of the impact it will have on our everyday lives. Commenters who are accused by others of religious bigotry because we oppose this building are owed an apology. Shame on you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next I will try Lackey again. Let's see. And then the, the unmute should be at the it should be at the bottom of your screen. All right, let's see. Um, so moving on, we'll go to, uh, to Butch. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. And you can turn on the camera. Sure, give me one second. Okay, you should be able to use your camera now. Start a video. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Butch Quick. I live at 213 Fillow Street, uh, around the corner from where this facility is gonna be going up. Um, my issue is, you know, all the comments about the community and the religion and everything that the Sikh community is doing for everyone, which is fabulous, that's great, it has nothing to do with this. This is simply using common sense. The building is too big. And like the previous speaker had said, I don't think anybody that, that actually did this research came through this neighborhood. I mean, have you been at this Richards Avenue at the start of the school day? The traffic is horrendous. You can barely get through here. I can barely get out of my driveway in the morning to go anywhere uh, because of the car is going through, dropping kids off at school and people using the shortcut from the Merritt Parkway to get to 95, where they make that very sharp turn onto Richards Avenue, which if they take too fast, there's a telephone pole that will take you out and it has been hit numerous, been hit numerous times. Um, I just, I, I'm not opposed to, to the, the uh, temple at all. It's just where they're going to put it. It just doesn't fit. It's too big for the space. That's all. Um, I, I wish them the best in finding a, a place that uh, will suit them and they can grow and expand as people come uh, because right now, I think someone said this is going to be the largest temple in the tri-state area. I, if you build it, they will come. And it will be here. It's not going to work. Um, 
I, I, I truly do wish them the best in finding the right location for the proper size uh, and space of this facility, but I don't think it fits here. I, I know it doesn't. Um, I walk past that spot every day as well. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next uh, we have uh, Preeti. Hi, can I, can I please turn on the camera? Sure, give me one second. Okay, you should be able to use it now. There you go. Uh, good evening, Chairman and the members of the Zoning Commission. I'm Preeti Kaur Sethi, and I live in 33 Princess Pine Road. And we've been resident of Norwalk community over 17 years. And uh, we have, uh, uh, I have, uh, we have four retail store location in Stamford and Norwalk. And two of my kids, uh, my oldest one has graduated from Brian McMahon and right now he's going to Stony Brook. And my younger son goes to, is a freshman in Brian McMahon. And our Gurdwara is a second home to us where we gather to practice our religion, our faith, our happiness, our sorrows, it's our community. I've been, uh, I used to volunteer in the Punjabi school or Sunday school for many years. And where both of my kids have uh, learned to speak Punjabi and our history and are part of our Gurdwara. Above all, we have learned how to become a good human being and service our community. Uh, not only Sikhism teaches us and everyone to be equal and help our community and build our community. And our new Gurdwara building has been designed, keeping in mind with the, all the codes and environment and would be a great addition to South, uh, West Norwalk since I live in this community, I know it would be a asset uh, and it would be a wonderful addition to the churches in the neighborhood. Our, uh, our management and professional teams have been working very hard with the city officials for many months and to follow all the city codes and regulations. Therefore, I request you to approve our application for the special permit to build our Gurdwara at 283 Richard Avenue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next, um, Taylor. And Taylor, to unmute, it should be at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I don't know if you can put me on your picture or not, but... Um, I can, if you give me one second. What's that? I can, give me one second. Okay. Would I click on join as a panelist or just? Yeah, if you click that, then you should be able to use your camera. Okay. Okay, you should be able to now, Taylor. Yeah, I see me over there. Buddy. Okay. And then the, to start your video, it should be at the bottom left-hand corner. It'll say start video. You just single click that. Okay. 
I did. There you go. You got me. All right, I'm a resident of Norwalk for the last 60 years. I've lived at 211 Fellow Street for the last 52 years. I have spent five years working for the committee when they remodeled Brian McMahon High School. And after that, I was on the counterpart of you gentlemen, the Zoning Board of Appeals for between four years in, in the 70s and about 10 or 12 years in the uh, 2000s. So I'm familiar with a lot of what you're going through. Uh, I'd like to say to make it short that I agree with everything that Kate Sanderson presented and that all the discussion about the churches doing charity, uh, it seems that this is a trademark of all the areas and they don't need to use that to gain um, success because of the fact that they're doing charity. That's what churches do. Um, my big concern is that this is just too big for the neighborhood. I've seen the whole area develop over the 52 years that we've raised our three children here. And this is just like putting the proverbial two pounds in a one pound bag. It's uh, just too much for the area. It's not compatible. Um, another question is, there's been no discussion about signage and that can be one more distraction of people going by here and it, it just doesn't work. And I second whoever talked about the left turn from Richards to uh, into or from Fellow Street into Richards, the curve is sloped in the wrong direction and you're very much concerned that you uh, don't hit that darn telephone pole that's there. Uh, that's, my, that's my comment. It's just too much for the area and should, should not be approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Anthony Segalas. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I'd like to be, uh, I'd like to be visual if possible. I don't know what I have to do to make that happen. I can do that, give me one second. Okay. Okay. And now you just have to go to the bottom left hand corner and hit start video. Okay, gotcha. Okay, thanks very much for allowing me to speak. Um, I agree 100% with everything in Kate Sanderson's uh, pr presentation. I'm a 30 year resident of Connecticut, uh, but new to this area, I bought a house on Bed Marley Road 18 months ago, and I've invested in this house. And I was kind of hoping that this would be a house that I'd be able to entertain my future grandchildren as I have three daughters and understand that a couple of them were, you know, giving some thought to that. Um, at the moment, I kind of wish I wasn't a resident here based on everything that's going on. Um, I, I, you know, I find the supporters of this proposal miss the point here. They, they spend time sell, they've been spending time selling us, selling the commission on the positive core values of the C community. And they sold me on that. I, I buy into that, I agree with all that, but that has nothing to do with our opposition to this plan. It, I walk by Richards Avenue every day. I take walks to the Norwalk Community College. It's a mile and a half from here. It's a two and a half mile, two and a half mile walk back and forth. The, it, you know, the structure that they're proposing is gargantuan. It's clear that the parking analysis is flawed. I don't appreciate being warned or told to be careful by the proponent's lawyer. Uh, Mr. Royna was, was on this. I mean, but it seems to me that the lawyer's position is simply can be summed up as if mistakes have been made in the past, 
uh, why should we discriminate against this religious religious group by by correcting this mistake now? <laughs> this is a maddening viewpoint. I mean, we are. This doesn't make any sense. We support the values of the C community, and uh, but I implore the commission to right size the project and protect and respect the existing property owners because property values will get destroyed. And we are here. You know, we're already well into a bubble. Okay, I don't know if you've noticed that, but we are into a bubble. So already existing property values were already 20% higher probably than they normally would be. And we haven't even had the beginning of, the, of an economic downturn. And you're about to impose this large facility into an area which will destroy property values. I don't wanna look out my window every night to see the top of this gigantic structure. And I will, I believe have an excellent view of that based on where I live. Um, Richard's Avenue is extremely, very, is extremely busy and I am worried about the traffic and, and the accidents. And I would like the committee to strongly uh, re consider rejecting this proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, you have uh, Uber. Hey, this is gonna be, uh, I can, be on screen as well, if you allow me. Sure, give me one second. Sure. So I should click join as panelist? Yes. All right, now you can go to the bottom left and hit start video. I can go bottom left. I am there. You guys see me? I don't see myself though. Yeah, yes, we do. Oh, okay. I see myself as well. Okay, sounds good. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, the commissioners, and everyone uh, who is who has joined us today. Right. So myself is Kulveer Singh, and uh, by profession, I'm a computer engineer, and I work with Freddie Mac, and I live in Connecticut, Milford, basically. Right. I have two kids, so I am. Uh, in Connecticut for around 12, 12 plus years. And since then, we as a family are regular member of Guru Tegh Bhadraji Foundation, Norwalk. Uh, I don't want to repeat, I want to respect uh, chairman's uh, 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 thoughts, not to repeat what my fellow community members have already uh, talked about regarding Sikh religion and, you know, community services and all that stuff. I think we, we all know that and, um, and we have all acknowledged that, right? So I, I'll come to the point. So there are, so there are, has been a lot of uh, talks, like I, let me start with 5,000 versus 18,000, right? So our current building is 5,000 square feet and, and, and we are proposing, uh, uh, you know, for 18,000 square feet building now. And that's true, we, we are doing that, right? But why we are doing that? I think that's a very important question that we need to realize. Right. So I think people need to know that in our current building where we are staying, right, uh, it's, it's a bank, it's an old bank, which is not basically designed. Okay? We have that building, we understand that, and we are living there for managing there for around for 25 years. Okay? So we are using the same hall for our work, worship and, and for the dining. Right? And there's no ample space for the classes for the kids. We are sharing the same room for different group of classes there. There's no suitable... Uh, you know, accommodation for our most respected person in the community, the priest. There's no private fence boundary for our children to be safe when they're out of the four walls of Gurdwara. So the list continues, right? So there's a lot of reason that, that we need a new, uh, you know, place. And, and I am thankful to our community leaders who had been looking for uh, a suitable place for years now. And, and I think we are fortunate uh, to finally able to acquire this 283 Richard Avenue for that purpose. So there's another thing that is confusing me today is, uh, you know, I'm very confused rather. I, this is my first public hearing, I think in, in US. Uh, I am here in US since around, around 14 years. So I think I am attending this first, first one in my life here. So I'm, I'm confused. There are opinions and sentiments that I'm hearing versus there are professionals who has vetted this design, who has worked very closely with the leadership, with the city code, norms, and all that comes into play, right? And, and they have presented their design and everybody says that, okay, everything is as per the norms and regulate. 
uh, as well the defined norms of the city, whether it is building height, building structure, or you talk about parking or talk about traffic, everybody's given their report. You talk about, uh, you know, trees, greenery, everything, right? So, so there is, the gentleman has very in detail, uh, gave us all what number of trees, what bushes, how many heights, you know, everything has been presented. It's a matter of time that those trees will grow and we understand that, right? So, so, so my question here is, the, the subsequent question that comes to my mind is, now are we, are we discuss, are the decisions for the commission will be based on the opinion or sentiments or it will be based on the well-defined rules, regulation, codes by a city and vetted by a professionals and technici technical firms, right? Who certified whatever they have done are as, as uh, for the proposed building, whatever their analysis is, is, is within the limits of the codes of the city. So I'm very confused about that. What I wanted to, you know, so I, I'm leaving myself in this state at this point in time, you know, I, I, I'll have to closely watch where this goes with all the discussions that are still need to happen on the public side. But I wanted to say one thing, people are seeing, uh, you know, having different commands and my fellow Norwalk neighbors, you know, uh, we have seen different opinions and sentiments. What I feel is, I think 283 is a very blessed street. It has three religious institutes. We, we, we see that as a place of God, right? People come there for peace. People come there to give positive vibrations, vibes to the community, to the neighborhood. I think nobody has spoken from that front. Nobody is thinking from that front. It's not a noise. I don't think it's a noise. Our, our God's place cannot be a noise, right? So I think uh, I would like my all neighbors and you know uh, we respect their opinion, we respect the sentiments. I think we need to reconsider our thoughts, right? And, and we, need, we need to seriously think, what is the gap? If, if, if they are speaking, whatever they're speaking is true, then there's a big gap with what we have as norms from the city point of view, right? What, are we, what do we call as code of, uh, city codes, or I'm sorry if I'm not using the right word. So I think it's city codes and norms. So there's a serious dent in there, right? Which has to be uh, seriously being reviewed by the city in order not to get everybody into this sort of situation mm -hmm. where we are today, right? So uh, yeah, I don't want to take too much of time, but I, I myself living in a very confused state and I am very strongly recommending commission, right? Let us respect to whatever the defined norms by the city are. If there are dents, there are changes that need to happen. There should be a process and there will be a process to do that. And that this is not the time to do that. Okay, let us learn from even this situation, or the, this case of our proposal and, and do the right thing for the, so the next time it doesn't happen. If, if there, is, there is required to be some changes that need to happen in the overall norms of the city, right? So I think, um, uh, I think I'll stop there. <laughs> and I, I again, thank the chair and, and, uh, and everybody for listening to me uh, and giving me the opportunity to speak uh, and uh, have a good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and then nobody currently has their hand raised, but if you are still interested in speaking uh, regarding this application, you can use your, uh, the raise your hand feature now. Um, Ken Montanez. Yes, good evening. Good evening, panel. Um, I just got a couple of quick, um, Ken Montanez, I live at 15 Fireside Court. I've been living in this neighborhood uh, since 2013 um, and searching for a home. I, I used to live in Stanford uh, in the Glenbrook area and in searching for a home. Um, the opportunity came up to buy my house uh, at 15 Fireside. And um, in just mentioning the West Norwalk area to anyone that's familiar with, you know, Fairfield County, I'm sure there are a lot of people on that are very familiar with the area. And just mentioning it to anyone in Fairfield County, um, they always say the first thing that comes out of there is the uniqueness of the area giving the the low density the proximity to um you know the uh you know 
the 95, the Parkway, shopping district, houses of worship, and so on. Um, so that that is actually what's in question here, right? I mean, uh, building such a uh, an enormous structure in this very unique area of Fairfield County um, is what's in question. Um, Pema Galati started his comments with warmth and community, which are two um, pretty powerful words. And at the moment, there is no warmth and community. And that's pretty unfortunate that we're starting this process to be good neighbors with this, uh, with the Sikh community, with these, um, with uh, some sort of, obviously some, some concern to get to warmth, warmth and community. Um, and, and that's a big concern for us, uh, for me at least. Um, and I think there's a couple of things that are a little deceiving. Um, I think the rendering was purposely um, done to, uh, to, to make the building look a little, uh, look a lot smaller than it actually is. If you if you take the comments or the the, te the testimony of the landscape designer, the maximum tree size he used in his testimony was 20 feet, right? Obviously, the building um, is going to be much larger than 20 feet. It would take an enormous amount of years for these trees to even get anywhere near that rendering. Um, so I thought that was interesting that he used the term, the rendering was pretty close. Uh, pretty close in this, in, in, in this arena doesn't really help anyone to say pretty close. I think everyone, uh, including the Sikh community, have to have, we should get a real rendering of, of to scale as to exactly what this building is gonna look like. Um, and I think that that's, um, imperative to this process to actually get a real render. Um, I don't think also, I, I, I second the notion with the, you know, and I take uh, with the attorney uh, uh, using kind of threatening language and, you know, using terms like be careful and because what happened in the past and, and kind of threatening uh, the board, uh, the commission here. Um, and I, I, I also think that she owes everyone on this call a, 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 an apology. Um, and uh, I also uh, just would like to say, you know, um, it, again, I think what they do in the community, I think if everyone that spoke on, on the behalf of the Z community, I, I, I applaud you for what you've done. I applaud you for your um, involvement in the neighborhood, in, in Norwalk. Uh, I think you've done a, a bunch of great things and I, and I hope that you continue to do these great things in, in Norwalk. Um, and, uh, and I just, you know, I, I agree with Mr. Rowena when he said, you know, <clears throat> that, you, you know, just because we've made 15 mistakes in the past <clears throat> doesn't mean we have to make a 16th mistake. Um, I, I do think it, it is, there's a reason why it's special permit um, because these things have to be considered, the in, impact on the neighborhood and the, and, and the residents of the neighborhood um, should be considered. So um, that's really all I have to say. And, and, uh, and again, I'd like to thank the, the C community and the, and the commission for, for giving us this opportunity and uh, also have a blessed holiday. Thank you. Um, again, if anyone else is um, interested in speaking, you could use the raise your hand tool. If you're dialed in on a cell phone, you would hit star nine. Uh, the raise your hand tool should be at the bottom of your screen. It'll be under everybody's faces. All right, uh, John M. I, I, I don't wanna use up my time for, for questioning. I just actually at 9.53 wanted to 
move that we adjourn this until January 6th. I see some very tired faces in front of me that have been very patient and listened for whatever it's been now, many, many hours. And I think um, we've had a lot of great, great discussion on both sides. And so I'd like to just say good night, but not use this as my time for a question. And I live within an eighth of a mile from 283. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Brian, I'd um, uh, like to uh, see if we have other speakers uh, waiting, uh, particularly if they will not be able to join us uh, on January 6th and uh, would like, therefore, to speak now. Sure. So, uh, so, so there's one person with their hand raised, Steve. So, Steve, if you just want to indicate if you're able to attend the January 6th meeting, and then we could save your comments for them. I, I will. I will try. I'll do my best. Well, would you, uh, if, if we're talking about just one person, um, and you'd like to speak, go right ahead. Sure. I'll be. I'll be quick. Uh, I live at. My name is Steve Starkman. I live at two two three Philo Street, so I'm very close. I've been here uh, about almost 24 years. Uh, most of the things have been said. Uh, I oppose uh, this project, by the way. I'll, I'll start with that. I, I don't want to repeat everything that, that uh, was said. Uh, what wasn't discussed at all, maybe it's written somewhere, I haven't seen, is hours of operation. And they talked about when the services would be. But I know when uh, Dolce was moving in or took over, there was a lot of discussion about events and ending times. Uh, of course, traffic was involved with that, noise, music. Uh, you know, I see the, uh, the social hall in, the, in this project and it's uh, rather large. There could be a few hundred people there uh, for a wedding or for something else. And, and there will be uh, for certain or would be for certain. So that, that's something that uh, I would hope can be discussed and, and vetted out. Uh, that hasn't been brought up at all. Uh, on a, any given Saturday night, what is to stop uh, someone from uh, booking the facility for an event, uh, you know, a private event? Uh, it, somebody mentioned that before, well, they're private. Well, they're private, they usually have more, uh, more guests attend than in normal services. Uh, for a special social uh, gathering or, or occasion. So uh, you know, the parking, I, I don't really want to get into, but please don't forget, there are people that work there that will park. There'll be deliveries. There'll be trash pickup. Uh, a lot of things that weren't discussed and, and would affect uh, the neighbors, certainly the people right there, my, myself included. And, and I, I don't know all the rules of the zoning commission. This is also my first time I got on one of these or listened, but... Uh, it is a special permit. So there's a reason why it's being delayed and we're listening and people from both sides give their views. Uh, and, and I would strongly say, please consider our property values and the neighbors that are close by and how it will affect people that have been living here. Uh, one gentleman has been living here over 50 years. I'm, I'm here almost half that time. Uh, it's definitely gonna affect me and my neighbors. Uh, I, I wish uh, the C community well. Uh, the things that they do in the charity, it's fantastic, but that really is irrelevant to a, the building in this location, which is just too big. Uh, thank you for your time and I uh, hope everybody has a good holiday as well. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Suchi, um... We're going to uh, stop uh, the public comment at uh, this point, and uh, we will reconvene uh, at uh, 6 p.m. on January 6th and give anyone who has not had an opportunity to speak uh, that opportunity. Um, is there anything uh, further that you wish to say um, before we uh, close out the hearing for the evening? No, not at this point. I would um, expect members of the public to continue to voice their concerns, uh, raise objections, 
um, speak in either favor or opposition, and then we will reserve our time at the close of public comments on the 6th to make our, to respond to comments, questions from the neighbors, any other comments or questions that we have not responded to from members of the commission, and to um, conclude our rebuttal and summation on that evening. Okay. That sounds fine. Then uh, with that, uh, we'll close the hearing for uh, this evening. And uh, as I said, we'll reopen it again uh, on uh, January 6th when those who uh, have not yet spoken but wish to speak will have an opportunity and uh, Attorney Sachi uh, will have an opportunity uh, to uh, uh, provide rebuttal uh, to this evening's comments and to uh, comments we receive uh, on the 6th as well. And just to confirm as part of that rebuttal, some of the commentary and responses may be directly from some of the consultants as they relate to their, their specific areas of expertise. That's perfectly appropriate. That's fine, thank you. Uh, and with that, we'll move on on the agenda. Uh, we just have a couple of uh, um, items. Uh, the first being a motion to approve the uh, minutes of November 17th. Uh, can I have a motion? Please. I want to go to bed. <laughs> uh, Galen, Galen has moved. Is there a second? I guess a second. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Nick, Nick seconded. I think he was the first second. Uh, Michael, uh, we can't see your face. And uh, I, I think we can just do this with um, uh, a hand raise for all those in favor. Um, just raise your hand if uh, approve the minutes. And Michael, you're, we can't see your hand, so you're going to have to tell us. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. The minutes are approved unanimously. Um, Steve, do you have any comments? No, just a reminder, we do have a meeting um, next Wednesday as well. Okay. Uh, well, let me uh, uh, say that uh, something about, about that. Um, we have uh, a meeting next Wednesday, which is also very important. Uh, we're gonna be um, uh, asked to act on um, uh, the uh, zoning changes in East Norwalk. And then on um, January 6th, uh, we uh, will uh, close out this public hearing and try to arrive at uh, a decision um, regarding this application as well. It really uh, is critical um, that uh, we all make it to those two meetings. Uh, as you can see this evening, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, there are five of us here. Um, if, we, if we don't have at least five, um, it's gonna be very difficult to um, uh, make a, a, a completely fair uh, decision next week uh, and more difficult still, I think, on, on the 6th. Steve, um, we do have uh, at least one commissioner, uh, Marcella, who's not with us this evening, who uh, will be continuing on the commission through the 6th. Can I ask you to contact her and encourage her uh, to come to the two meetings and to listen to this evening's meeting so we get as much uh, participation from uh, the commissioners as possible? Certainly, I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, anything else uh, that uh, anyone wants to bring up? Do we know yet? Oh, go ahead, Galen. I was just wondering: Do we know yet who's going to be on the next commission? Some I think of... Steve. Steve knows. Uh, any of us who have indicated <laughs> uh, that we want to continue to serve apparently have been reappointed, or will be. I'm sorry, will be reappointed, uh, or at least the mayor will put forward our name, and uh, then the council has to act. Yeah, I was just wondering beyond. But you know, uh, I, that are here, who I presume said they wanted to continue, who's 
what is the makeup of the new commission going to be? I think we'll, we we should know that um, next uh, Wednesday. I believe the council meets on Tuesday. Okay. So uh, by Wednesday, we should uh, know who's on the new commission. Um, but again, I want to encourage everyone to um, do your best to make it to uh, these next two meetings. They really are very important. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, I'll, and I'll point out that it's 10.04, uh, I would um, welcome uh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Galen moves. I'm going to assume that Nick seconds because he was willing to move. Uh, again, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, oh, thank you, Michael. Uh, okay, we are adjourned. Thank you all. It's been uh, a long evening. I appreciate everybody's patience. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.